is the Don and Mike Show. Want to participate in a Don and Mike Show contest? How about this? You or a member of your household can only win once for 60 days. You must comply with any age limitations for each contest. For complete contest rules, send a self address stamp envelope to the mighty WJFK, PO Box 3649, Washington, D.C., 2007. Thank you, and God bless. Everybody loves Don and Mike. Uh -huh. Literally. Hey, hey, good going, guys. Got your headphones on. Everybody's ready to rock and roll. Right. Yeah. Um, We're all here. All the faces. We do have a, an O'Reilly moment. I'm good. Uh, Bill O'Reilly, and I've not heard this yet. We just handed this by Johnny. Bill O'Reilly moment. Here's today's moment. A message to Vice President Dick Cheney. Mm -hmm. Hey, Dick, you're a moron. Wow. All right. Or, you know, uh, perhaps stuff. another, or perhaps he was talking to another fellow with that name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, good. Or perhaps he was using it like, uh, like Spicoli in Fast Times at You never know, but hey, Dick, you're a moron. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he said it. There's the, uh, there's and we have it. There's the Bill O'Reilly moment. No, That's good. Don't, don't hey, break it. You're a moron. All right, stop it. My name's not Dick. <laughs> Just stop it, please. Thank you, Bill. Uh, respectfully. Yes. Leonard Goldberg has passed. Oh, yes. yeah. Leonard Goldberg, uh, a, a, a.k.a. D Tony Randall. TR. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. LG, also known as TR. Mm -hmm. That's too bad. Tony also, Randall. Uh, I hate to say this, but also known as FU. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Felix Unger. Sure. sure. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Maybe the most famous F you yeah. of all time. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, to a much lesser extent, L.S. Love, um, Sydney. Love Sydney. Love Sydney, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. TF, TV faggot. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the first. The first openly one. Yeah. FTF, first TV faggot. Tony Randall, uh, excuse 84 me. 84 years young. Yeah. Leonard Goldberg uh, was always, uh, on this show for a while at least, our celebrity in a bottle. Yeah. Um, you know, before, I guess maybe before and during mm -hmm. Al Molinaro and, mm -hmm. and the era of Dick Van Patten. Right. We, we, we really got in a hole. We could get Randall. We got Randall on his uh, mm -hmm. line one day where we just called his house. And a lot of times we would be happy just when he would say hello and we'd say hi. And we'd say, what do you want to do? He'd say, I want to hang up on you. Mm -hmm. And well, then he wouldn't even say that. He'd say, hello. Click. Yeah. But that, we, he was we, gruff. Wouldn't we have called Tony, him? this is Don and Mike. Well, hello. Click. Click. Gruff but lovable. Yeah, and he knew we were calling. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, there's another one going. Yes, uh, Tony Randall regrettably has left. Oh, and, uh, what, what will his young, beautiful, rich, blonde wife do? And now, <laughs> Buzz, you always you always have a unique slant, slant to make me feel a little better about something. Yeah. And now, in a very uh, phony and symbolic way, Rob will actually take his Rolodex out <laughs> and will cut through the name Leonard Goldberg, also known as Tony Randall. Ready? I'm, I was born ready. Yeah, it's no longer in the book. There you go. You happy now? Yes, yeah, right That's between a... Ritz Carlton and Rosie O'Donnell, there's an empty spot. There you go. TR. You happy now? There you go. I would have just changed the listing to the Widow Randall. Farewell, Tony. Happy's not the word. Tony. Enjoy your trip. Bye, Lenny. <laughs> He's too bad. It's too bad. He's a good guy. LG. Um, <laughs> Funny man. <laughs> also, also, Ryan Seacrest. Out! Seacrest, out, 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 out of a job. Oh. Uh, his TV show got canceled. Uh, and I'm wondering, the girl that won, the girl, the girl with kaleidoscope eyes, the girl that won the trip to go out there, hadn't she already been out there? Well, they'll probably shoot a few more, right? I think she was going out this week. Hmm. Was it this week she was going out? Well, the tickets and she was going to say, good. she was going to say, uh, hello to Ryan from, her, from, uh, his gay fans, Don and Mike. Exactly. The gay fans, Don and Mike. Anyway, I don't know if that uh, TV show will be on or not. When did they make the announcement of the cancellation? Well, Mike, um, fortunately, I'm on idleonfox.com, so I get the alerts. <laughs> right, right. On my computer, like the weather alerts. Oh, no, it's an alert. They canceled the Ryan Seacrest show. No, I don't know. I read it on uh, some site today. <laughs> I read it on uh, CNN today. Well, wow. maybe a little too much on his plate. Well, now he can concentrate on being a, a DJ. Mm -hmm. And, uh, boy, I, if not today, tomorrow, those tapes will arrive uh, from my friend out there. Secret who, show. Who has been uh, taping the Ryan Secret. Secret who uh, replaced Rigdon. DJ show, right. Mm -hmm. He took the place of, of, of Rigdon D's. Uh, oh, before we uh, start the show, uh, what's up around this radio station? WJFK FM. <laughs> <laughs> you mean Playland? <laughs> <laughs> now... Before we get into this, yes. did I tell you whose brainchild that, that, that piece of signage was? I believe you did, and I was kind of surprised. That doesn't strike me as the type of individual that would normally provide that kind of uh, graphic design. Okay, we work at a, in just an armpit of a building. 
Uh, from the outside, it looks nice. Mm -hmm. Looks very modern and very high tech. And even even when you walk into the outer offices, we we now have a what what is that? It's a, it's almost like when you go to church and uh -huh. and you kneal down. We have a we pew, have a, pew. A, a prayer bench. We have There's, a prayer bench yeah. in front of that that serves. Literally, no functional reason. As you walk into no the radio functional station, purpose. Right. Colette is sitting behind the bulletproof glass, and I took the liberty of sitting on it, uh, giving Colette much joy as I as I sat with my my head really almost back of my head resting on on her little uh, window countertop. So, so th picture this: you walk into this office, it's like a doctor's office or a dentist's office. There's a woman or a guy. In this case, it's Colette. She's all woman. Trust me. She sitting, is sitting behind the window, and she opens the window, and then where you stand and you look down at her, and she's got all the phones and, and stuff in front of you. There's like this little bench. Tiny, that, that, like a, it's, it's, what's its purpose? Like I don't a kneeling know. bench. It's like, it's like from My Little Pony or something. Did anybody explain to Colette what that was for? Did, did anybody tell her what, what they're going to use it for? And that's well, not even the nutty thing we want to talk about at this radio station. <laughs> the, the, the prayer bench that we have in front of well, the we, But we might need to also talk to Fulman. Hello? Hey, uh, Colette? Yes? Hey, it's us. Hi. Who, who put that uh, prayer bench out outside your window? Um, I'm not sure. Okay, uh, oh, come on, Colette. I'm not sure who put it out. Oh, come on. You know who put it there. Who? What, what do you think it's there for? I don't know. I have no idea. Did anybody explain it to you? No. Not Isn't enough. it? Who do you think put it there? Mm, Julie. Okay. Julie. It's a good Probably. guess, I think. Probably Julie. Julie does all the decorating. She right? does the decorating mm -hmm. around here. Yeah. She got that functional lamp out there. Yeah. Broke yeah. off a lot of light. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> There's like a bizarre. Yeah, but, the, but at least the lamp is decorative. There's, There's a, a color, color. And yeah. there, therefore it would have a function. Mm -hmm. I don't I do not believe the prayer the bench, bench is either decorative or functional. Has anyone knelt there, Colette? I did. Did you? In fact, I, I knelt there and crossed myself. Yeah. <laughs> did you get it? Did you like that sight nice. gag, Colette? Yes. Has, has anybody else commented on the prayer bench to you? Yeah, everyone has. And, and, and what do they say? Yeah. Do they say it's fantastic? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> okay. we got to find out what the mission was for that. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Colette. You're welcome. Bye, baby. Bye. Bye-bye. Mm, that's Colette, everybody. Yeah. Mm, director of First Impressions. That's right. Bring me off a piece of that. Amy. Yes, Donna's right. Hi. Oh, it's Amy, uh, the girl uh, who's going oh. to be on the Ryan Seacrest Oh, maybe show. she has been already. Have I'm you... still going. Uh -huh. Oh, even the show's even though the show's canceled? I'm flying out tomorrow, and I'm going to the show on Thursday. So these are the last shows of Ryan Seacrest. That's right. Wow, you're, you're a part of something history. Did they call you to reassure you? Yes, they called me yesterday. And did, they, did they say, we're real sorry that his TV show has been canceled, but the good news is you're still coming out? No, they just told me it was going to be earlier in the day than originally planned. Yeah, Got to pack up furniture. <laughs> this is exciting for Amy. This makes her like the Bette Midler to the Tonight Show. Yeah, you can there, one yeah. of the last right. guests. Right. right, one of the final ones. What did they say to you exactly, Amy? Yesterday? Yeah. yeah. Just that I should be there at 9.45 instead of 10.30. Right. Did they, but did they, did they say anything about the cancellation? No, they just told me to have a wonderful time. Oh. Have a wonderful have a wonderful time on this canceled show. Well, maybe they didn't even know yesterday. You... Sing Wind Beneath My Wings for him. <laughs> All right, Amy. Well, uh, uh, listen, Godspeed, Amy. And again, what are you going to say to Ryan Seacrest? Gay Don and Mike love you. Gay Don, Don and Mike, Mike love, love you. you. Right. Okay, thanks, Amy. Bye, Don and Mike. Bye-bye. Bye, honey. Thank you. She's oh, good people. And with that, hey, Don and Mike. Hey, now. There you go. We better start the show. You can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe you. That's right. Hold on a second. Hello. Hi, Julia. Hello. Hi, uncles. Hi. Keep your space between you and them, Julia. Say uncle. Come on. Say it. Hello. Says hello. Based on a true story, he was a neo-Nazi with one true enemy, himself. No. A man of hate and a soul torn apart. View discretion advised. That's my daughter. I know that's your daughter. No. Good girl. Good afternoon, Mr. <laughs> and Mrs. Rock Hard Cat. Yeah. And all the ships at sea. I know you think I'm going to say something about the Widow Ransom. Yes, but I won't. All right. You've enjoyed their image as like em cookies. Now let's enjoy the good sound of Todd Geronimo. And there he is, the sweet smelling Mike O'Mara. All right. Yeah. Forgot about your B.O. Thanks for reminding me, Tom. Todd and Mike show us. Thank you for listening to me. Look how mad Mike is at Rob. Okay. 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 Filed. Duly noted. Note uh, to self. Don and Mike show new episode on this. Tuesday. Tuesday. Come on, Tuesday. Uh, 05. 
1804. Hi, Don and Mike. Buzz Burbank here. That's right. Four months till my birthday. Mm -hmm. uh, Just throwing it out there. It's never too early. Never too early. One month and three days to my birthday. Four days. Very good. Okay. But that's like, you got to do it when it's a month before. And when, once you get into the 30-day period before. Well, your birthday September 18th. You said you want a nice even number. Yeah. I'm Sorry, I'm just getting my bearings like a month. after the whole B.O. thing, hey. which is a lie. I was not even going to mention it. Well, he air. brought it up because he wanted it brought up. <laughs> but did and I not? You are on my did list, I, pal. Oh, stop. Did you I not in the, in the office? Did I not tell you I got uncomfortably close to your underarm? I checked. I walked I in and Don said he smelled B.O. And I said, I have no B.O. smell fellas, and I don't have B.O. smell. Okay. Fellas. This well, nose, smelling. This nose don't lie. No, I would Mike, be willing. Mike, I would be willing. Room, anyone you would bring in here, I would be willing to have smell me. I find it manly. How about how about your hand? How about your right hand? What do you mean? Have someone come in and smell your right hand. Don't Absolutely. do anything with it. Okay, right now. Because you remember what you did with that hand? Yes, I was checking my pits. No, and you I remember my crotch. <laughs> oh, you vigorously checked down there. Smell my hand. Listen, here's the thing. Smell my fingers. No, and I didn't mean anything by this. Mike walked No, it's no, it doesn't mean anything when you walk into the studio and the <laughs> no, no, first words the out office. of your mouth were I smell B O in the office. <laughs> and I, walked... I've never had B O. I just unless had... maybe I've played a hockey game. I said Phew. something like that. When you walked by I didn't say Yeah, what have that? you said B you said B.O. Yeah, but not you right away. You said B.O. in a minute. <laughs> but not right away. And then I went went over to caress your head. Oh, God. Getting this my kid as close as possible. This is the gayest, the grossest thing. But I because I wanted to prove to you that I'm it was sitting, not coming from me. I'm sitting at the desk. Mike has just walked by. And I mentioned, you know, okay, there's an odor. There's something there. I have not only showered. I have not only put on deodorant. I have not only put on cologne, but I am wearing a fresh... O'Mara's Restaurant and Pay oh, T-shirt. Look around, cafe. You whore, you whore, you whore. <laughs> and Thank you. That I'm proud game of worn it. jersey. What's that? That game worn jersey. It's game worn now, Rob. It will be on sale. And you came over, and as I said, yes. not a trace of odor. I know. I am a visionary. He's kissing <laughs> yes. sweet, ladies and yes, gentlemen. Three. It is. It is fresh. Listen, the nose don't lie. The nose don't lie. You mm. walked by. I smelled something. Right. I smelled something, and you asked me to identify the smell, and I said, without a doubt, it's, it's the smell of. Uh, locker room no. Uh, no. flash. No, I disagree. Not, not, not true. Not true. Not not even a, not even a hint of it. B O. I'm willing to take the test. Interesting. I'm uh, bring them forward. There's bring no, all the noses in here you want. There's and no they don't need. need to smell my pits. They there's can just no smell need. me. Mike, there's no need because now let's be honest. We've not spent every second together. Right. How do I know that you've not gone and given yourself a quick Elvis shower? I did no such thing. <laughs> my nose knows what my nose knows. Yes, and I've never. I do not have body odor. I'm telling you, I smelled something. Hmm. Well, it wasn't me. It might have been your breath blowing back in your face. Oh. <laughs> no, no, my friend. I know that smell. And the smell, the smell that I smelled was not that. Smell. And I would like to. I challenge you. Know, you know what that is? There, Can I just? Uh, <sighs> mm, geniusy. <laughs> mm, sexy. That's what that that uh, breath is. No, listen. I know how offensive my breath is. Mm. Oh, no, I didn't smell your breath. But I'm today. telling you, I know no, how no, offensive it is. I, you know, I rarely have ever complained about your breath. But I'm telling you, I know it's offensive. I work on it. I have, I have never. <laughs> I have really. I don't think we get kissing close. No. But uh, but I, I know uh, I got the bad breath. I've never really experienced I've the never bad breath. Never detected. And it. I would not. And I would not have mentioned it to you if if I really hadn't smelled something. Yeah. Well, it wasn't bo though. Okay. Like, because I have cologne on, mm -hmm. and I have I have I'm freshly bathed. I wasn't even going to mention it on the air. Well, Rob brought it up. I said you smelled good. You did not. You oh, no, Rob actually confirmed the fact that I do not, I do not have B.O. He just wanted us to fight in front of a reporter, didn't you? That's what he wanted. That's all you wanted. That's what he loved. You love it when we he, fight, he Rob. He enjoys it. You love it when we first, fight. That's my first greeting. Yeah. My first what greeting. What kind of hello is that? Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Hey, listen. <laughs> no kidding. You know, one day I get here on time. <laughs> you know, one day I'm punctual. You know, not early, not late. Punctual. Right on time. Right on time. Punctual. <laughs> Uh, Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and I should mention, worse than that smell. And and I give it everybody else. Worse is just, than that smell. Hold on. It's, What's worse than Mike? Hold on. <laughs> worse than that smell. Yes. Because it was a fleeting smell that mm -hmm. went in and out of my nostrils. And right. I'll give you that. Okay. 
you know, maybe it was me. Maybe it was maybe it was just something that came in with you as you walked through the lobby. And I no, I know what I think it is. It's an unusual smell. It is a brand new shirt, and it smells new. However, oh, there, this is un, this is undeniable. It's not laundered. It's out of the box. This mm -hmm. is undeniable. And I'm sorry, Rob. This is going to be friendly fire. I have to go to you because you jumped right up to to Mike <laughs> when when he started to say you sold him out. Mm -hmm. You bastard! I say that there's nothing grosser than watching your big Fred Flintstone feet <laughs> as you take off your sandals to tell us why you have the best-made sandals in the world. You know what? Birkenstocks. That, of course, Birkenstocks. Mike has always said this, is that mm -hmm. if you want to know something, is that I like my products. Right. And I will sell my products. <laughs> and Mike bought some Beeline, you know, whatever. I'm sure they're fine. These are Timberland. Sandals. These are perfectly good. Yeah, solid and brand. they're more modern than those Fred Flintstone shoes you're, you're modern like a jetpack and almost as useful. <laughs> because look at this. This is a design. I want to show don't you. Don't do it again. Don't do it again. Look at the they soles. Show down the soles. <laughs> these are almost Please. new. Look at the toe imprint. You know what size these are? These are a size 65 because they're German. <laughs> you know, it's true. They start when Rob took it off, of I said, I swear to God, it looks like a corrective shoe. It's so big. How many well, trees died? The show is so big. In a way, it's cork, a shoe. It's made out of cork. Right. And what they do is they carve out the proper shape for your foot. I right. can't meanwhile, wait for the weather to get mild. Meanwhile, while he's saying this, yes. that big Fred Flintstone foot is just <laughs> flopping all over the floor. Yeah. That's true. It does look a little like a ham, but <laughs> if the foot a little. was any smaller, I know I'd fall down all I the time. I remember when he got those. Remember those toes when he came in with the things on his toe? Oh, yeah. yeah. The, little bag, the little bags. Do toes look better now that you've gotten them all shorn yeah, down. they're beautiful. You know, very nice. I'm not like, I'm no, no foot model or anything. But, but these are brand new, these ones. But this remains a great product, the Birkenstock. The yeah, size. I see Mike's sandals now. Now they're both taking their sandals off. Fine. The you know. style is... They and, now they're, and now they're oh, both no. smelling their own shoes. Well, these like, are brand new. Why don't, we, why don't we just get the DVD box set of Will and Grace and have a, <laughs> and have a, and have a party? We'll get you guys some princess phones. They, uh, <laughs> you, can Arizona. you can smell each other's shoes. I was about can, to say this is a nice American-made product, but I'm afraid I cannot say that. How <laughs> about a reading riddle made in China? You can lie to each other about the existence or non-existence of body odor mm -hmm. as you smell each other's shoes, which says to me that perhaps... Maybe your sense of smell is a bit skewered. No, I, I'm getting a good smell off this. Believe me, I can, I can smell. Skewed or skewered? Okay, college guy. <laughs> <laughs> but you knew what I meant, didn't you? Yeah, you knew what I meant. Yes, and my sense of smell. Skewed. My olfactory senses are as sharp as anybody in this building. Listen, don't bring olive I into can this, smell, okay? I can oh, smell. Don't bring the late anything. Olive Osmond into this, I can, man. I can smell anything. I have an incredible sense. But you have on brand new sandals. Rob brand sandals new. Out of the box. No, Rob, they're only uh, about two weeks old. I re-upped this year. I went to my good friends and I said, I need another pair of size 65 did you, Arizonas. Did you, did you know something he told me that he's going to on Friday? He said to me, mm -hmm. oh, what are you doing? I can't believe how good I smell. <laughs> and I haven't freshened he, up. He can't stop smelling I mean, this himself. is really my smell out of the car. If okay. you could die, you'd come back as you right now. Right. Because you smell so good. <laughs> I apologize. I would love you to bring someone to me to <laughs> smell me. I'm sure you smell okay. <laughs> I, but you know, can I, can I say something? And the can reason I, I'm, I'm, I'm reacting to this, yes. it's not just a lack of B.O. I smell so good. I smell as good as I smelled the other day. Rob, go grab somebody. Go grab yeah, somebody. Thank you. Smell, thank you. Smell thank mine. you. Thank you. Please. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I, the other day, we were discussing odor. I wanted someone to smell me then. You know what You know what he said to me the other day, uh, Robbie, as he goes to get someone to smell you? Yes. He was all excited. So what are you going to do this weekend? He said... Well, I'm going to the, the wide shoe store. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a store. It's just shoes specially designed. Oh, oh I know. Oh, hey. No. Hey, there's no. a good oh, here. No, hi. But wait, but wait. Dennis yeah, Murphy. Yeah, but Dennis, I don't trust you. You're, I mean, I know you're credible, and you're going to tell the truth, but I wanted somebody. <laughs> All right, here he goes. Smell, smell Dennis. Dennis. Hi, Dennis. Oh, I'm gone. Hold on. Step up to the microphone, uh, Dennis. Okay, here you go. Well, now, listen, please. Right. Mike, let him put, just put his whole... Mouth area, nose area, uh, your armpit. Oh, I smell cologne. Thank you. Now, would you would you smell Mike's right hand? Smell the fingers. Uh, Dennis? Smell the fingers. Dennis. Smell the fingers. <laughs> smell the fingers. <laughs> Dennis is funny. <laughs> Dennis, yeah. smell Mike's fingers. I don't want to get my fingers on. Smell good. Smell good. I saw where those fingers were about 25 minutes ago. So did I. Would you Would you like to get anyone else? No, because no. it is Dennis. Okay, all right. No, I I give uncle. Okay, it's <laughs> Dennis. Uncle. And Dennis, besides Dennis, just came from the bathroom. Dennis is curious if he should leave or if he should sit. He should have a seat, Dennis. Okay. Welcome, Dennis have Murphy. Welcome to the show. 
We're jam packed today. Oh, besides right. Dennis Murphy, uh, also coming by, a uh, funny man, and he really is Frank uh, Caliendo, man from I Mad think, TV. You know, I said this before. I think this guy is the best in the business. So anyway, as far as impressionists right. go, and I mean the best in a long, long time. He's good on Mad TV. He's good on that uh, NFL show with those uh, with those guys. Uh, hold on, here's uh, for you, Mike, uh, Jeremy. Yes, Jeremy. Hello, you're on the air. Hey, I've got a question for you, Mike. Where did you eat today? Where did I eat today? Yeah. I ate at well, home. A lot of times, well, you go out to eat, you can come back smelling like a stinking rotten armpit, and you may be being falsely accused. No, I, I, there is no false accusation here. It's uh, simply, All right, uh, then. simply an error. What kind of a restaurant uh, would that happen in? An error. <laughs> no, um, I don't want to be the restaurant tied in. Goodbye, no. sir. Well, Thank you for the help, it. Buzz. Uh, but you know, you're wearing yours. You're wearing, wearing, you're wearing, wearing a T-shirt. T-shirt. I'm wearing Omero's restaurant yeah. and pub in Lovely Bone. And that's the go. color. It's a bone Dude, t-shirt. You change it. We have them in bone and green. How about this? You come out with a new line of shirts. Be O'Mara. Okay. Jeez. <laughs> wow. Do you know chicken fingers? It smells like chicken. Really? Yeah. It smells, the shirt smells like chicken? No, no, your fingers. My, your fingers smell chicken like chicken. Chicken fingers. Yeah. No, I didn't chicken fingers. Not chicken you're smelling. No. 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 Right. Shut up, up Dennis. <laughs> oh. State's witness might be turning over yeah, to the other side. Of course, I knew he would anyway. That's I mean, you know, see, about it. you know. Okay. Well, chicken fingers. It's okay, not Dennis. <laughs> okay, Mike. Right. Okay, Dennis. Okay. All right, so thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Jeremy. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, Jeremy. So here he is, uh, Dennis Murphy, everybody. Yeah. Did, oh, and uh, re- remind me, we want to talk about the WJFK Players Club. Yeah, this, this is something even weirder than the prayer bench. Thank you for giving me a tour earlier. Even weir- weirder <laughs> than the prayer bre- b- bench uh-huh. out, out front, the receptionist area. But it's more evidence that this place is going insane. Yeah, I mean, not only are our prices insane, but right. seriously, everybody that works here is going in freaking sane. Absolutely. And hey, what is Julie's number? I'd like to ask. Number one. Oh, what's her number on the book? Come on. Yeah, because I want to ask four about five the, one. The prayer five bench. One? Okay. Let's just check out. Why is there a prayer bench? Julie, outside? Julie Fullman is the sales manager mm-hmm. and the director of uh, all things that are uh, Barbie just, related. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Buzz. Barbie related. Let's find out. Is she in the building? Is she still got her car parked that crazy way, Buzz? No, she straightened that out as soon as she got back into town. When she got back from the decorator store. Julie, I can't get to the phone right now. Please leave a message in your number. Dennis, ask her what's up with the prayer bench. I'll record your message at the tone. When you're finished, hang up or stay on the line for further options. Hi, Julie. Hey, no, no, start now. You wait for the uh, beep. Oh. Hi, Julie. This is Dennis. Uh, look, look up with the prayer bench. Don and Mike will not go know. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Well done. Say thank you. Say thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you'd like to add your message, enter one. To listen to it, two. Listen to to re record. Here we go. Good. 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 If you'd like to add to your message, enter one. No, no need. To listen to it, I just two. did. Just to send re-record, it. enter pound. No, just send it. Send it. Pound. Send it. Pound. Pound. Yeah. You've reached the WJFK business office. Thanks, Smarty Jones. Uh, so anyway, I'm sure the message is there. Yeah, and uh, we'd yeah. like to find out because uh, there's no real reason for it. Uh, so remind me, uh, the Players Club is even nuttier than the prayer bench. Players Club, right. baby. Uh, but Dennis Murphy is here because uh, he has a partial report on what happened uh, when, he, when he went out to uh, California uh-huh. to be on Spike TV's... Right. What's, what's the name of the show, Dennis? Oh, oh, for Skunk Award Show. What? The what? The Tork. 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 Oh, for Taurus, tor- the car, Taurus. Yeah, Taurus. Yeah. Oh, for okay. Stunt Awards. Oh, for. The yeah. Taurus Stunt Awards. Yeah. Taurus Oh, for Stunt Awards show. The Taurus Oh, for Stunt Awards show. Yeah. Very good. Black, black, black TV. Okay. So you represented the Don and Mike show at this nationwide uh, deal. With it. it had a lot of uh, DJs out there. Uh, it had DJs. Uh-huh. It had television. And it had a lot of foreign press, too. Like Germans, uh, Belgians, um, uh, Africans. Um, uh, uh, there was a whole bunch of foreign 
Parker. Now, now I bet that there were a lot of DJs who got this invitation. They wanted mm-hmm. Mike and I to come out there, and right? Part- participate in whatever, like the the where you tie two legs together, and yeah, and then, then right. do an interview, with, around. and then do an interview with Kevin Nealon. Yeah, and then you, <laughs> you know you're pretending that you're driving. Bill Parker. You think that you're driving and you put like through some fake stunt school? Were there a lot of uh, drive DJs that were into that? Uh, of course, there were a lot of drive DJs. Um, I, I was the only normal guy there. The only normal guy. Now, did, but, you, did you hang out with the DJs? Say that again. I, 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 I hang out. I, I hang out with the DJs. They look good. They look good. I met the um, the BUS. Uh, disc jockey who carries the show in Buffalo. The Buffalo disc jockey? Yeah. Okay. His name is JR. I met him. I met this, I met this beautiful lady from Chicago. Can we, uh, uh, can, uh, that, that almost might uh, require a replay with, isolation. Uh, with Dennis saying, I met this. <laughs> I've never heard you react quite that way. Yeah. It's a combination uh, of excitement, <laughs> sexual excitement, yeah. with like a radio excitement. He's sweating Grunting a lot. Bull. Yeah. He's got a lot of uh, he's got a lot of saliva coming out. I, mm. it's, like, it's the excitement of the award snow that he was just at. <laughs> oh man, I fell asleep in the middle of the award show. Really? The award yeah. show? Right in the middle of it? You got it, Rob? <laughs> All right. Hold on one sec. Oh, we got to do it on CD. Yeah, because that's sorry, I, uh, I shouldn't you know, have brought it up. Don't but, worry about it. Uh, anyway, Dennis. Yeah, Dennis. So when you're out there with these other these, you, oh, you got it. Here yeah, it is. To... Okay. A Belgian, um, a African, um, uh, uh, there was a whole bunch of boys. Now, now I bet that there were a lot of DJs who got this invitation. They wanted Mike mm-hmm. and I to come out there, and right? Bill Peck. Bill Peck. Bill Peck. Bill Peck. Bill Peck. Oh, where's the spot? Do some fake stunt school. Uh-huh. Were there a lot of uh, drive DJs watch. that were into that? Uh, of course, there were a lot of drive DJs. Um, <laughs> I, I was the only normal guy there. Here we go. Only normal guy. Now, did, but, you, did you but, hang out with the DJs? Let's stop, stop I, that for I, a second. I, I, now, let's apologize to uh, the from ninety two nine WBUF, who I'm sure is more normal than Dennis. Oh, yes, of he's course. the jive disc jockey, as we all are. But mm-hmm. sir, whoever you are, right? Whoever you are, what's his name, Dennis? J R. J R. J R. Mm-hmm. That's a good station in Buffalo, ninety two nine. You're a better. You're a better person than Dennis Murphy, J R. Way to go. Here we go. Oh, I just didn't discuss that. Why did he get his feelings hurt? Oh. He understands. He, under- he understands. I think so. JR understands? Yeah. So, uh, did he rap with you about Buffalo? No, it was that. I cut a mango for the show. For your show. And you met a hot babe out there? I, I, I met a hot oh, right. Chicago okay. babe. Here you go. Here's where Dennis said it. Did you say that again? I, I, <laughs> I hang out. I hang out with the DJs. They look good. They look good. I met the um, the BUS uh, disc jockey who carries the show. Who's the part you wanted to hear? Yeah. Okay. His name is JR. I met him. I met the I met the beautiful lady from Chicago. All right, back it up a little. That that is worth it. That must have really been pretty. That's, I thought it might be. That's really, really. That's I really thought it might be. Good play again. Yeah. Okay. Jockey who carries the show in Buffalo. The Buffalo disc yeah. jockey. Okay. His name is JR. I met him. I met the I met the beautiful lady from Chicago. I met this beautiful lady. All right, one more time, please, Rob. There were no words. I I'm met this. Her. I met this. <laughs> Beautiful lady. <laughs> the, show in Buffalo. the Buffalo disc jockey. Yeah. Okay. His name is Jr. I met him. I met the. I met the beautiful lady. I, and I'm not a scholar. No. I met the <laughs> beautiful lady. Wow, so, well, Dennis, you did communicate that she was hot by your uh, your explanation. Yeah. Of, yeah. of her. So I met this. <laughs> <laughs> you lady. So you met her, and what else happened? Um, uh, uh, I represented your show in a car race, and I was the last DJ to come in. Yeah, you uh, uh, you, ra- you raced a car? I raced a car. Really? Yeah, it was a go kart. Oh, right. a go kart. But it was uh, it went up to seven five miles an hour. Now, didn't they, they, listen, no offense. Didn't they give you like a handicap? But because you you only have uh, one arm, one well, hand. I, actually, what happened was they put me in the car, and the car would not go. So mm-hmm. I could not have the benefit of driving around the track one time, getting the you getting the hang of it. Yeah, yeah. and uh, next thing I know, two nights later, I had this major crash. Oh, you crashed the go kart? Yeah. yeah. Mm. But, you know, like, it, it took me like ten seconds to, you know, catch myself with them, yeah. and I, and I only I did not complete the race. So you crashed the car. How were the the people from Spike TV? Were they okay that you oh, crashed oh, the car? Uh, oh, 
wij hebben een keer. Ik heb een keer gewoon een keer aan de En hij didn't complete. Did you have a good, did you have a good time in California? Oh, yeah, a good time. Not the fact, you know, right I got off the phone with you, uh, yesterday, yeah. I went to John Wayne's, uh, f- uh, footprint and handprint. I put my stub on his handprint. You put your stump in the, yeah, John, and, the Duke's, and RJ, uh, handprint? Yeah, and RJ has a picture of that. And All right. And we will, uh, we will get Raymond, that wait a minute, Raymond was with you? Yeah, Raymond was the sound guy and the picture guy for me. Oh, Raymond traveled with you? Yeah. Mike oh, Butler. Oh, the, the, the under, butler. My butler went out there yeah, with you? The like, Raymond called me a couple of weeks ago. Say hi for me, will uh, you? Uh, okay, hey, uh, Raymond, like hi. I mean, when you see him again, oh, oh, something oh, with effort. Oh, okay. You put the effort, you, Dennis. You put your stump on John Wayne's uh, handprint. The hyphen, Webster's Dictionary defines, is a <laughs> symbol used to divide a compound word yeah. or a single word. Amen, brother. It seems to me that when a man calls himself an Afro-American, a Mexican-American... Hey, you Afro-American. Italian-American, <laughs> Irish-American, Jew... Hey, oh, Jewish American. Hold on, what he's saying is, he mm-hmm. saying? I'm a divided American. Uh-huh. Hey, you Irish American. Divided American. John, we all come from different. Well, we all came from other places, <laughs> different creeds, different races. What is it you like about John Wayne? Uh, you know what? The first movie I went to see was nine years old. And I saw Hellfighters, and that. But that was the first movie I saw in the theater. So John Wayne was bigger than life for you. Yeah, for me. You know, I I love his acting ability. I I love love when he got smudged by those two crackers and hellfighters. It's It's a link to the golden age of Hollywood. Mm. Is he handsome? Oh, he was was handsome. The harm a line has done. A simple little line, and yet... So as divisive as a line can get. A hyphen. A crooked cross, the Nazis flew, and the Russian hammer and sickle flew. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sad that you know it by heart. How could you know he was that racist? Oh. Well, he's not really being racist, Dennis. He's but, talking about how we're divided saying, as Americans. What he's doing, he's saying, he's saying what we all really think. He's it's saying that we're Americans. It's, it's true. He's called the hyphen. In the lives of men. You tell him, Johnny. He could ever fan the flames of hatred faster than the hyphen. The hyphen. The hyphen. The hyphen. The Dennis, how hyphen. did you feel when you first found out John Wayne was gay? He was gay? I didn't know that. Hey, all you Afro-Americans, all you Jewish Americans, all you uh, Catholic Ameri- Americans, Irish Americans. Right. We have to We have to break. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dennis, yeah. let's see, you're back. Now, wh- what about the tape recorder that we sent you with? Uh, uh, when will you have that uh, presentation go, ready? Go, uh, I'll do a block with Austin Lalo. All right, so how about, yeah. how about let's see you in a couple of days okay. um, with your tapes. Okay. And who did you get to tape? Did you tape anybody famous when you were out uh, there? Uh, God, right. There was nobody who walked out. But Burt Reynolds walked by with his son Quentin, but... Burt but, Reynolds? Yeah, Burt Reynolds. That's and, a big star. And he snubbed us. You know, that's... Burt, Burt, Burt! And also, Sarah Michelle Geller walked by and she snubbed us also. Uh, she snubbed you. So, yeah. what are the uh, what are the tapes of? Are, is... Uh, we just just it just uh, the red carpet with Rob Patton, Kevin Nealon, Bill Paxton. And, you mean Bill Paxton yeah, and right. Kevin Nealon? Oh, uh, were you actually? And, and then uh, Christina Noka for Q3. What? Come again? The Babe from T3. From oh right, Terminator yeah. Three. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll get that tape. I'm okay. glad you had a good time. So you did not make it on to the final cut for Spike TV. Uh. But we won't know till May 26th. Oh, okay, so we'll know soon, though. Yeah, I think we know. But what do you, what do you think, Dennis? <laughs> you, you crash the car against the other DJs? What do you think? I, hey, I'm right. Who knows? You mean, did you see any cameras around you at uh, all? Well, there were cameras, but only... Any of them pointed at you? No, no. Well, that would answer the question. Don't get a picture of me. Well, I think you're, you know, you're a novelty act. You're a, you're a handsome mm-hmm. uh, novelty act. You were there. And, and, and you know, I, I was wearing a Hawaiian shirt and nice pants. And huh. Mike, Mike, what I said to you about Bo before, mm-hmm. and after being in the studio with Dennis for about ten minutes, oh. can I say something, Mike? <laughs> yes. I humbly and I mean this. Thank I you. apologize. Oh, Thank you. Very whatever much. it is oh, that right. I smelled, right. about you had to be mm-hmm. that fresh new, uh, freshly uh, uh, printed uh, Omaris right. Pub T-shirt that yes. you're wearing. Yes. Because now I am sitting in front of Bo. <laughs> uh, he is a, a sweat machine. He is. He produces a lot of sweat. I don't want to smell your armpits. I smell you from no, here. Oh, no, you don't. I, I do. I took a shower two hours ago. Dennis, can you feel right here on your face? Can you feel this other side? 
Other side. Uh, but, yeah, John, in fairness to Dennis, that might not be coming from the pits. It might be coming from the breath. No! No, but I'm saying look at all the sweat on his face. He's got a lot of sweat, but, the, you know, if you did a breath check on Dennis, okay. I got it when he was smelling me. Uh, no, no. Yeah. I, I, uh, your I, breath is, is rot, rotten. Come on, let's I, I, And I, I would be willing to, t you know, if anybody wants to take the breath test. Why? I, 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 I got to look over here. I look clicking, you know, you like the breath whole time. Oh, no. <laughs> why, did you, why did you get a hammer and hit, and hit, oh. and hit me down there? <laughs> <laughs> hit me as hard as you can. Right. No, right. I don't want to do that. Is there anybody that wants to, um, let's see, what about, uh, what about Joe or Alex? That's Alex. <laughs> Alex is a young broadcaster. It's, yeah. a, it's kind of a hazing ritual. Mm -hmm. My flesh is flesh. Alex ha has his own show now, right? It's on yeah, every yeah. night. The right. Hideout. 11 o'clock on WJFK. Hey, Alex. Alex, Alex this is kind of an initiation right for young broadcasters. Who said it? You did. Are you kidding oh, me? Oh, yeah, we, when you were talking about hit you down there. Uh huh. Oh, right. With a mallet. Take a hammer. Oh. Uh, hey, Alex, you're under no obligation here. Alex Jimenez, everybody. Click, 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 click. But we'd be impressed. Uh, would you smell that up your yeah, breath? And just... Hey, Alex, you know, he's got the gift of gab, but I do believe he may be speechless right now. Hey, Alex. Uh, is this part of the mentoring um, yeah. project? No, this is at your own, you know, Alex is back here. He's, he's helping us out uh, behind the scenes. Got his own show. Couldn't be prouder of him. Now smell Dennis's breath, please. All right. I will. All right go ahead, Dennis. Stand up and give him a breath check. You're just gonna, you're gonna... Dennis, get up. Dennis, stand, stand up. up. And just breathe into Alex's nose. <laughs> Okay. Oh, <laughs> he cringed. Oh, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, he cringed. I adjusted. Uh, oh. Okay, Alex. Still making faces. Okay. I adjusted like hot, nasty. Thank you, Alex. You Thank you. Adjusted it. Alex, help yourself to a bottle of that effing vodka up in the office. Way to go. You got a bottle of right. vodka out of that. Please there you go. Thank All right. you. Thank you, Alex. Alex. Thank you. That's Thank Hefe. You know. Good job. <laughs> So there you go. There's, there's objective. Uh, somebody objective. Yeah, that was fair. A poor guy. You can win if you let us once and for all do the show where we hook up with a dentist, a dentist, not a dentist, a dentist dentist, mm -hmm. and actually, you know, get those choppers fixed. The top, the only choppers are that are bad are the bottom the three. Bottom, the bottom three? No, that yeah. must be the source. Try the bottom <laughs> 10, the bottom 12, the bottom 17, <laughs> the bottom 38. The bottom 40. Yeah. The back 40. The rear 40. Right. But you know what? We want to help you. Uh, the password is Da Vinci Veneer. <laughs> yeah, just like the swan. I, I've been thinking about it, and I've been getting a lot of comments about, uh, what's wrong with your bottom teeth? And, and, well, just and, not. I, I'm looking, you know, I'm feeling, um, but I gotta do something, cause maybe okay. that's why. Can't we make that happen? Right, right. I would think so. And you know, Dennis, you really want if you're going to replace the bottom, you're going to want to replace the top too. The top looks good though. Well, no, don't yeah, want yeah. it to not it's match. The top looks like, like two different with a, with a mallet. You know what? Dog teeth. Your top top teeth. Aren't they pointed? No. No, no. Look at the top teeth. No, look at uh, Rob. Look. One, two, three, Let's four from the right. Look in there, Rob. Look at there. They're yeah. They're, well, they're not. Perfect. And what we could do is we could get you perfect teeth. I think well, if we fine. get him a like consult Ed with a dentist, we can really get it, yeah, get it I done. Yeah, so. Get you some nice re Regis Philbin. Okay. Uh, anything to improve my teeth. smile. Right, absolutely. I can smile, but Amen. anything to improve my smile. When we right, finish Dennis. with you, you'll look like Tony Curtis. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. Tony Curtis, that's fine. Tony, right? Now that's a makeover. That's a makeover. Uh, Dennis, congratulations on all you achieved when you were out in Hollywood. We look forward to hearing your tapes in a couple of days. Thank you. With you with these celebrities. Mm -hmm. And uh, anybody you want to thank? I'm not going to thank you. No, 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 the, the sponsor. Who's oh, the sponsor? Oh, I'm not going to thank Spike TV. Spike TV. And, and I'd like to thank the, the, the Infinity Lady who... The uh, Infinity Lady who you uh, don't remember? Uh, her name is Karen. Ka Kara. Or Karen. Kara or Karen. Kara or Karen. Yeah, yeah. And then, and also, I'd like to thank... Uh, yes. I'd like to thank... Uh, I'd like to thank... Let me just say this. Who's the guy in Buffalo that you mentioned? <laughs> JR. JR. JR, you should be feeling real good about yourself oh. right now. I, I mean that, dude. You should be feeling so good about yourself. Absolutely. You know, normally disc jockeys are made to feel like like we are just, we, you know, we're one level below clown. Absolutely. We're the lowest on the showbiz heap. So, JR, congratulations. You got him triple Los Angeles. And guess what? You, unlike, unlike all the rest of us disc jockeys, you were not at the bottom of the barrel. Because, and I, because we sent you, Dennis. And I'm not going to cut Willie for letting me take his picture with him. Chuck Willie, Chuck you didn't get him on, but you didn't get him on tape. No. Well, but by the way, they know how to throw one, one hell of a Hollywood party. 
A great because Hollywood party. You went to the best Hollywood one you've been to? You can have all the fugu you want, all the strawberry ice cream you want. All the strawberry ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> Those all stars. All the Amstel Light. Amstel Light and, <laughs> and, and strawberry ice cream. Yeah, we were there for six hours. And six it, hours. It, it was wonderful. Now, on your, you're, you're on your fluctuating weight scale right now. Where where are you in your opinion? Uh, are you up on the upper end or are you in, on the lower end? I'm at 245, what's according your, to my digital scale. What's your highest uh, that, that's uh, ever been? My highest is 260, so I'm 260. fluctuating Pretty close. Okay. with that. Right. Hello, Chuck Nullery. Chuck Nullery? Chuck Wobbly! Chuck Nullery? Wobbly! He's got that one. Russian hammer built a wall. Oh, I, sorry. No, 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 we don't have to dump anything. No, he set off the alarm because he said oh, the, 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 hammer, the mallet the word again. No, you guys, you know, see, you made me think that there was like a yeah. nasty oh, word. Oh, I'm hammer. sorry. I hit the delay right away. <laughs> just, uh, John Wayne said hammer, and that's why that. Uh, that by the way, Dennis, he wasn't really gay. It was just a joke. Quick, quick, oh, okay. He was straight. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, straight and John Wayne. in here. Oh, deliberately. Uh, can't, you, can't you all? I well, how do It's up to you. How much ice cream did you eat? You oh, did uh, the bridge uh, that can span uh, all the differences uh, of man. Uh, Be free in uh, mind and soul to be our uh, most uh, important uh, goal. Then I had a glazy yeah. cookie. Yeah. yeah. And then I then had a right. chicken finger. Mean. And then I had a round. You know, like, it was crowded, so I got two beers at a time. And how many beers total do you think you had? Me. I have about eight or nine. And if I might find the world where it is, peace of mind. Me and a couple of people. And a reaper. I'm still not. How do you not love this man? Perhaps you've all wondered what it might be like to go to hell. Perhaps you've done something in your life you thought, no, you know what, it's okay. Hell would be okay for this. Well, just imagine that. You're in a room and that's all you hear. Rob talking to Dennis about ice cream while John Wayne goes on about the hyphen. <laughs> Shoot me now. Okay. Dennis, get out of here. We'll see you in a couple Thank you, Dennis. Uh, DennisMoofy.com. Of course. Uh, one hand, one heart is still available. That's one hand, CD. That's one hand, one heart. I got, yeah. I got you copy, Rob. Oh, great. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Bye, Dennis. See you in a couple of days. Bye, Dennis. Tape with the Hollywood celebrity. Thank you, Dennis Murphy. There he is back from... Uh, Back from Hollywood, we sent him out there. He's the emissary for our show at Spike TV. and uh, he made it here on time. Very good job. Well, he's all about effort. He is. He did a great job. Mm -hmm. And boy, oh boy, does he stink. I'm sorry <laughs> I said that about you, Mike. <laughs> well, the Hefe got the, uh, the the little uh, breath check there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Poor Alex. And well, Alex, thank you for that. That yeah. was sacrificing yourself for our show. Because I don't believe Joe would have done it. No. I think Joe has enough tenure here that now... There's no chance I don't need to do that anymore. I wouldn't do that in a minute. Oh, yes, uh, here's a plug for Dennis's album. Oh, good. One Hand, One Heart. Well, that's when he sang it with the girl. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Stop it. Seacrest out. Seacrest out. 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 You can still get that CD? Yeah, it's available in stores. Okay. Rob has his copy that Dennis autographed for him. There it is. Oh, that's nice. He autographed it today. <laughs> Rob, I love you and please enjoy one hand, one heart. Love, Dennis Murphy. I forgot that Dennis's uh, solo effort is not really a solo effort. It's, no, it's uh, singing with a girl. It's yeah. duets. A girl from Iowa. There's we uh, God, man, we're late. Hold on. But, stay there. Uh, what buzz? Oh, I just thought we're late. We got a break. This is the Don and this is the Don and Mike Show. Hello. Sean Hannity. I'm like, this is the first time I've ever called you, and I'm glad to be listening to you every day right after the Don and Mike show. And Thank I you. just think that you would make a perfect guest on their show. Tell Don and Mike, anytime they want me, I'd be glad to come. <laughs> Hello. They can grow up to three feet long, walk on their fins, and live on land for several days, devouring other fish and birds and ducks. And they breed like crazy. Now there's possibly even thousands of fish in that pond. Line four, Larry in Virginia. You're on the air with Drudge. Matt Drudge, how are you? Doing well, thank you. You know, I have a theory about these fish that can walk on land. You'll notice they went from New York City over to Maryland, right? Mm-hmm. And they can walk on their own, correct? 
Do you think it's more than a coincidence that perhaps maybe they walked all the way to Maryland because... <laughs> oh, they hitchhiked down the 95. They walked down 95 oh, because they can't hear Don and Mike on in New York City anymore. <laughs> there, there he goes. Yeah, classic. The Taking Touch, Don and Mike. All right, now we're back. I can't stop You know, yesterday, I don't think we devoted enough time. There's a couple of things here. Sopranos and Troy. Uh, Sopranos, did we spend enough time? No, we didn't talk about it at all. Yeah, we're really. talking about, uh, I was uh, very briefly mentioning Tony's dreams. I hated it. Mm-hmm. I hated it. As did I. If I want Twin Peaks, and I didn't want P- Twin Peaks, <laughs> right? But I find it impossible not to sing along with the song. I I just like the Uga Shaka part. Yeah. Uga Shaka. Uga Shaka. You're in love with me. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh beautiful. Strawberry ice cream. <laughs> what did you want? Um, <laughs> if I wanted that, I would watch Twin Peaks. If I wanted to see a movie that had... Uh, or a TV show that had a dream sequence that lasted something like, what was it, 30 minutes? It was almost uh, three quarters of the, of the show. Yeah. And incidentally, uh, it's very Larry Sanders-ish that the show is scheduled to be on for an hour. Mm-hmm. It, by my watch, it was over at 9.47. And whenever I see this, I might have mentioned this yesterday, but I'm not sure. Whenever I see a show that's a dream sequence show, I think it's the producers really kind of coming up against a brick wall for ideas, mm-hmm. and they decide to slap this stuff together where it doesn't have to make sense because you really don't have to have a storyline. And I understand both sides of the story, that on one hand, if you've watched The Sopranos for all five years, mm-hmm. then you knew who the characters were, and maybe you would get a chuckle out of it. If you didn't, I don't know what, what the hell you thought. You know, as somebody who has watched that show forever, I, I still didn't track. I, I forgot who the guy was that was uh, married to Annette Benning. I forgot that he was the cop. And so William Hurd that jumped off, he jumped off the bridge. Right. He was right. in the whorehouse with Tony. Yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, and, and some of the guys in the car, you know, everybody remembers Big Pussy, mm-hmm. but as far as some of the other people, you know, it just was a little weird. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's, it's not the Sopranos. It's it, mm-hmm. and even when they do the stuff where they try to show you that Tony has got all of these anger issues and why he has the issues. And I told you before. I think that they've dumbed that part down. Right. Where in the last couple of weeks they made it so apparent. Right. You know, even a, a Tard would know. Okay. <laughs> Tony has problems from the way he was raised with his parents. But then in, in the next week it's like someone went down the rabbit hole with <laughs> Alice, <laughs> and all of a sudden you got Tony driving around in a car, and you've got him in bed with Carmine, and and I just uh, this is on a. Mod- Mafia note and all the stuff that I've read about the mafia and the movies I've seen. When you're going to do a mafia hit, when you're outside of the dream sequence, I don't think you uh, you do it the way they do it. I don't think you actually just take a chance that nobody's going to be driving by on a regular public street, cause a fender bender, and then in the middle of the street strangle the guy. I don't think it happens like that. I think you take a guy crime of passion, Mike. Yeah. Maybe so. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe. But it wasn't. It was a hit. It was supposed to be a professional hit. Strangle him, hit him, and shoot him. Yeah, no, you no. hit him, you yeah. strangle. You think you take the chance that he's going to, you know, go quietly into the trunk of that car. That didn't make a lot of sense to no. me. And in the early days of the surprise, are you talking about that beautiful red car? That beautiful red car with the uh, with the big tire on the back. Yeah, it just seems to me that they 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 were more true to the to the gangster stuff in the uh, in the old days. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, it's just it's a bit too na- too, too new agey for mm-hmm. me. New they're gonna age. whack the guy like that. They're gonna whack him like in a bar after hours, right. and they're not gonna do it. Uh, you know, in the middle of the street. I knew you'd hate that episode. Also, yesterday, why did you know we'd hate it? What well, you especially, but both of you. I figured we all would because of the dream sequence. Because uh, you don't like the psychological stuff. Well, I, you know, I don't mind it. Just don't beat me over the head with it. Right, which they did at that length. I understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. And when, you know, I get when Melfi's not in the chair and it's the girl with the Mercedes girl. Right. And, you know, I get I get all the references. Right. But please, if I want to see, you know, here's what here's a perfect example. I want to see Christopher's girlfriend in her underwear more. Mm-hmm. If I want to see weird stuff like like what, what they were doing, that uh, David Lynch type stuff, right. I'll rent the movie Mars Attacks. Where they take, um, what's her name, uh, Sex in the City? What's her name? Uh, Sarah Jessica Parker? Yeah. They take her head and put it on a poodle's body. If I want to <laughs> see something esoteric like that, mm-hmm. I'll watch that. I hate that, I hate that movie. I'll watch that. <laughs> I can't oh, stand that movie. Now, hold on a second. Hello, Don and Michelle. I can't stand that movie. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> hi, Tony. How are you doing? Hey, Don and Mike. <laughs> Hello, Mike. Hey, uh, you know, there's a precedent. Hi, Don and Mike. Where are you guys? Howdy. There's a precedent um, that's already been set. It was visions that Tony had when he got the food poisoning that allowed him to know that uh, Big Pussy was the one that was informing on him. But when, uh, when, when Big Pussy was the fish. Exactly. Right. And, and, and he, he had those weird dreams. This is not the first time the weird dreams have ever Yeah, but hold on. This was a 30-minute weird dream. Yeah, it, was, yeah, it was. It was a little extended. But... When they're sitting at that dinner table and they start talking, that uh, John Hurd character and Annette Benning start talking about their son and about how worthless he is and they, they never think he's going to amount to anything, that kid becomes AJ. AJ, yeah, right. Yeah. And, and again, I get it. I get it. I'm not a psychology major, but I get it. Well, I don't want to think that much when I'm watching The Sopranos. Right. Bingo. I really want to relax and have it happen. Mm -hmm. Tell me a story. Bingo. Mm -hmm. Don't put they me into a need, dream. They definitely need to mob it up more. Absolutely. There you go. Hello, Don and Mike Show. My brother. You want to make that show better? I'll give you a three-word, a three-word fix. Watch the show. Make the Sopranos better. King of Queens. <laughs> <laughs> Every week they tell a story. It's universal. And it's in a nice little package. Hello, Don and Mike yeah. Show. Hi, Matt. Yeah, the, yeah the, actually, the two cool parts, actually, yesterday, uh, well, or yesterday, Sunday, I should say, was when, when the girlfriend caught on fire. <laughs> no, we're all agreed that that was fantastic. Yeah, yeah and and the uh, of course the Asian call girl, like wow. Uh, yeah, that was quite that was quite a little peek we had at her, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. But now was that in the dream as well? Uh, no, no, I think he really. Show. I think at the when he was at the plaza, I think he really did uh, get a visitor. I think he called for a visitor. Yeah, see, I was see that's and then he went to sleep after that when he woke up. The call girl was gone, and it was Carmine in the bed. And didn't that start the whole dream? What? A TV, I don't know, it was weird. He was watching the TV, and there was a, like, commercial for the tall girl. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah, and why was there all that stuff, like, when he's in the house with Carmella, and then they're looking on the TV, and they're on the TV? Yeah. What, like, like yeah, no. come on, what mixed message are you trying well, to I, send me that I don't I'm not getting? I mixed message. I think in that, in that segment, what they're trying to do is they're trying to make it as dreamlike as possible, which I hate anyway. Who uh -huh. dreams like that? <laughs> I do. <laughs> do you really? Yeah, I do. I dream that, that I'm, uh... I've had dreams where I'm talking to somebody and I look at the TV and we're on the TV too. Oh, wow. really? Yes. Yeah. I wouldn't know that. I yeah. don't. I don't dream of that. Much as scent. No, forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I've had, I've had, I've, I, I don't remember the dream exactly, but it was uh, it was Channel Five Ninety Six. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Twelve ninety five. You buy all buy five channels for Channel Five Ninety Three. Channel Five Ninety Six is three up from Channel Five Ninety Three. And that's what you pay that twelve ninety five for. Amen. Because the other ones before that are uh, ACOS, the Taste of Spice. Yes. Oh, I call it Atmosphere because it's ATOS. Playboy. Playboy, and then you get Platinum. Platinum. Mm -hmm. Pure Platinum. Yeah. Which is usually where I linger. <laughs> or the hot zone. Direct TV is the best for porno. Is it the hot zone or the hot net? They got a hot net. They got to bring down that price though. Twelve yeah. ninety five for five movies. When face it, you're only going to watch them for three or four minutes. And I don't want the the dot com thing. Have you ever seen that when they no. have that going on? No, what's that? Where they've got where you go on one of those channels and it's the it's like an internet site that's a, that's up there and they just have a person is it, uh, performing oh, you yeah. can direct her yeah Reb well I mean is, I is guess it, if you're on the computer is it you can. webcast quality yeah. or yeah. Yeah. yeah I probably wouldn't like yeah. it Bill O'Reilly I'm not the I'm not the beautiful lady from Chicago oh, I'm sorry <laughs> oh you have it isolated now. Yeah, I, I thought it was this one hey Dick. You're a moron. <laughs> hey, hold on. I'm not the... I'm not the... Don't go together. Well, ladies are going to Chicago. Hey, Dick, you're a moron. Uh, oh, they work God. nice together as a package. They do. Um, oh, okay, so that's the Sopranos, mm -hmm. right? Everybody got their two cents in on that? Yeah, yeah I hope it yeah. uh, picks up next week. Uh, Troy, yesterday, you made me write this down. Uh, do you want to debate whether a Troy will be a smash or not? Well, um, yeah. I, I feel if, like if, a if, if you're for... saying smash, I, I'm willing to debate you, and then I think it's going to be a disappointment for the uh, for the producers, and I think it's... Uh, Who cares about the producer? Just the bottom line. It, the it, bottom line is it's not going to be a smash. I think it'll be a smash. It won't be a smash like... Especially with Shrek coming out. It won't be a smash like Spider-Man 2, mm -hmm. or like Shrek. Or like but... Gladiator, which is the same genre. Right, it won't be as big as Gladiator, and but... And it certainly won't be a, an award-winning movie like Gladiator. I no, uh, right. obviously not. Anything with Brad Pitt. Pitt what I had said, the, 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 and I don't even know if I said this yesterday when we were having this debate. The reason I don't think it's going to be a smash is that although Brad Pitt is a movie star that women want to go see, Brad Pitt is not that kind of movie star. Mike, Brad Pitt is great in Ocean's excuse, Eleven, where he plays the you know the little Weasley guy. May I just tell you, women want to be with him, and men want to be him. No, see, I disagree. 
I don't think he's that kind of actor. <laughs> Just kidding. I know. But I think <laughs> and when he said it's like, yo, you know, yes, this little, he's got a little listen, guy's voice. There's a bunch of dopey women out there. I'm just saying. I will lead you to freedom. Don't underestimate the dopey women. I, it, okay, whether it's a smash or trash, I think, what did it make its first weekend? $46 million? Right. Now, it goes yeah. up against Shrek and some other stuff. I bet the movie ends up making over $100 million. Oh, but, but movies like that with the market, are you, are you going to include Europe? No, just just domestic. It'll be interesting to see, but isn't a movie like that an epic when they spend one hundred twenty-five million dollars on it? It's not a guarantee. I mean, you don't you don't want a movie a movie that's you know they spend one hundred twenty-five million on it because they want it to make but two hundred million. But it's a crapshoot. You only win that one every once in a while, like with Pir Pirates of the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a million movies that get made like like whatever this this Troy movie is. But but I can't. Then I'm I have arguing to, for this movie. But I have to debate you that then I I can't I can't say that if it makes a hundred million that, that it's considered a smash. Okay, but it, it, where I live. If, if you got a movie that makes $100 million, it's a smash. Not if you pay $125 million to make the movie. Yeah, 220 according to some insiders. $220 million mm -hmm. it costs to make the movie? Right. They were hoping this movie would make $300 million. I think it's a smash. <laughs> you're not, you know, it's no fun when your heart's not in it. And I can tell your heart's not. You don't like arguing for Troy. I found you're not, you know why? Because you don't believe what you're saying. Is no, what? listen, here's the thing. I believe it's going to be a hit movie. I believe it's going to be a smash movie. But you You're start... a skilled bonesman, but I will tell you that I don't think. <laughs> you, you start talking about, you know, international gross and what it's going to do against... I Shrek. brought that in only to... Uh, try, to actually... help, try to help my, my, my woeful argument. <laughs> <laughs> You've brought that in before. Like Listen, the overall here's the numbers. Thing. You got a, here's my only point. You got a movie. I don't care if it costs five billion dollars to make. Mm -hmm. It made forty eight million dollars in three days. It had got to be a lot episode. of schmucks out there. If they even get half that next week, mm -hmm. that movie's going to be near seventy million dollars, and it won't be long until it gets a hundred million. And over the summer, over the year, there's probably only ten or eleven movies. I think it'll make maybe some, more. It might make some more money when it comes out on DVD. Mm -hmm. That make. I'm just talking about in the theater. To make, you know, if that still is not the barometer of, of what makes a hit movie to make a hundred million dollars, I don't think it is. Regardless of how much it costs, I still think it is. Now, but think I mean, a hundred million dollars. I mean, what do they make? What does the smack? What does a blockbuster okay. make now? Um, what, what is the kind of money? Well, you that, know what? Like, uh, well, well, hold I mean, on. I'm going to take hold the on. passion of the Christ out of it. Hold on. Kill Bill has made sixty-six million dollars. Okay. And is considered to be an out of control smash. Because it didn't cost that much, and they didn't think there was a lot of buzz right. about. But the movie cost something like forty million dollars. Mm -hmm. So actually, they've made, they've made a small profit on that one. Okay, but um, isn't that what it is? So I mean, if you're if you're spending that money to make a movie, you are spending it because you think, hey, but then, but this is going to be such an epic. You know, it's going to be so. Hey, give me a book of movies from last year. Do, do you got a book of movies from last year? No, I can get it on the net real. Quick. Okay, can you get it real fast? Because that'll be the easiest way. I think. Hey, let me just say this. After this weekend, uh, Troy will be referred to as a disappointing movie. For you know, and 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 we'll see what 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 they say about it. New York Post today reported that Warner Brothers is worried. Well, Warner Brothers is always worried. Well, what, what the hell else do they have? They got they got Brad Pitt in a gladiator. Suit. And Brad Pitt is in a, is just not that type. I'm telling I'm telling you, these dopey women like him. The women like him, but they don't like him uh, as a gladiator. I think they'd like him if he's reading the telephone. May book. I say something? Yes. In order for a gladiator to be successful, you have to have a gladiator that men and women like. Mm -hmm. Listen, as a gladiator, I Kirk think, Douglas Russell Crowe. I think forty-eight million, forty, so whatever, mate. That's a pretty goddamn good opening weekend for a movie. But it's why, then why is it being described in most publications as disappointing? Because you believe the crap that you read and and and, and all that stuff. My movie people tell me this. Who's your movie people? Charlie Stoffel. <laughs> no. Well, I was on the phone with Leonard Maltin the other day, ah. and Leonard said to me, "Well, I'll Troy tell you is a miss." When I was on the phone to the hospital this morning with Leonard Goldberg, <laughs> the last thing he said to me was, "What did he say?" It's not Tony he, Randall, of course. He said, "Troy is smashed." <laughs> to your guns in this argument. Didn't he like, say? Didn't he say that uh, he wishes he could be in the movie Troy <laughs> as Brad Pitt's father? <laughs> He does. As Achilles' father. Listen, I don't know. I, you know, I'll say, I think it's a heel. I'll say, I think Achilles has a heel. I'll say uncle on that. Okay. Uh, you know, on, on the Troy thing. I don't know. If, if we're going to argue about if a movie's going to be a smash, uh, cotton pick and smash or trash, right. I'd rather have it be a movie that I feel passionately about. I know, I know. And I know you didn't feel passionately right. about that. But the thing is, I said this about Troy early on, and I said it for one reason and one reason only. I didn't think that Brad Pitt was that Mel Gibson, Russell Crowe kind of movie star where people would say, hey, he 
he to me, let I, me just I, say, he is. can I just say this? He the is. reason I said this movie would stink... Me, don't think the lady protests too much. The reason I think this movie... And I loved Brad Pitt in uh, Ocean's, Ocean's Eleven. Ocean's Eleven, you've mm -hmm. said that. I mean, he's great in that movie because it's like perfect. He's a wise guy, kind of a slick guy. Right. That's what I want to see him in. In this movie, I looked at it, I said, he doesn't. he lacks any credibility as a, as a gladiator, like, epic movie star. And I think that you're not... So now if the movie it. makes $100 million, you go, well, it's not a smash. It's not, it's not a, would it be a hit if it made $100 million? Regardless of the cost? I, I, I don't, you know, because they, they put so much marketing Have into it. Have they really? I mean, I don't think yeah, they've got ads for I it. don't think mm -hmm. that they've marketed this movie. That's any, usually how you can tell if a movie's having trouble. They get test audiences, and they put that money. Okay, that, and that listen, media. I read Entertainment Weekly, too, okay? Right. And there have been as many ads for that disaster movie mm -hmm. that's right. coming out. That is going to be a blockbuster. <laughs> <laughs> By what? By what estimation? Just everybody's going to go see it. How much money did that movie cost? I don't know. Let's guess two hundred million. I believe. I would think so. With yeah. all the so, how much effects. did they have to make for that movie to be a smash? Well, they'd have to make. Uh, I would say for a movie that costs two hundred million to make it to make it like a blockbuster smash, probably have to make like two hundred and fifty to three hundred million. Mm -hmm. I'm not so, you make, so you only make fifty million profit. Yeah. Initially, I, the rest is all so worldwide in marketing. Okay, so let, so, but, so if Troy costs two hundred twenty-five million, no, no, so you're going with what Buzz said. I, there's no way Troy cost two hundred and twenty-five million dollars. The official cost is one hundred fifty million. Insiders quoted by okay, stop right there. Insiders <laughs> quote by Variety <laughs> and the okay. and the New York Post. You know what's fun is now you get now your first getting, figure. Now you're getting back into it. What's the first figure you gave? One hundred fifty. One fifty. One fifty. They it'll take... make one fifty. It'll make one fifty. Mm -hmm. I th I no, I don't think it'll it make, will. I think it'll make one fifty. I'm I'm happy to argue the point from now until Kingdom Come with you, but I really don't give a crap. <laughs> Brad Pitt, not epic star, right. not that kind of star. Oh, Christ, when did I get back Russell Crowe? That when did I star. when did I get back into this corner that I'm the world's biggest Brad Pitt fan? <laughs> you know what? It, I, I think I made think, a comment. I, I think, think the movie arguing. will be a smash. I don't think you're arguing arguing for uh, Brad Pitt. I think you're arguing for Mrs. Pitt. I think that's, that's why her. she doesn't need him. Yeah, but I mean, I know. I think you're, you're trying point. to make her feel better about you. <laughs> yeah, you got, right. She's looking at you. She looks at you every day. I do look at that beautiful picture of Jennifer Aniston. Sure. I don't even know why I even said that. What did I say? I Troy will be a smash. It was a throwaway. I yeah. like mm -hmm. epic movies. I really do. I like going to see them. I have no interest in right. going to see this. Movie. Would people stop paying attention to <laughs> random things that I say? <laughs> you know, when you throw out eight thousand things a day, True. occasionally I don't. They're not all going to stick to the wall. I don't say very often. I say, well, this movie is going to be a disappointment. And I said, in fact, I said a flop. <laughs> and I modified that yesterday. All right, here we go, Mike. The top ten. Grossing movies for 19 and 93. Okay. Or, I'm sorry, 2003. 2003. You tell me, are these movies smashes or not? I will tell you. Bad Boys 2. No. That made $139 million. Yeah, I didn't think of that as a... Matrix Revolutions. That's a, that was kind of a blockbuster. $139 million. Mm -hmm. Terminator 3. And a disappointment. $150 million. Elf. <laughs> yeah, not even on the radar. 173. Right. 173 million. Need a lot of money. X2. X Men United. Smash? I don't think so. $214 million. Isn't that amazing? I, didn't, I wouldn't think that that movie made that kind of money. Bruce Almighty? Mm, no. $242 million. Wow, wow. Matrix Reloaded? That was a big smash. 281. Mm -hmm. Pirates of the Caribbean? 305. Big, big movie. Nemo? 339. Mm. Smash movie. Okay, now that, that I'll give you. And, and Lord of the Rings, 376. And a blockbuster. Yeah. Nemo uh, and... and uh, oh, now, you know, hold on. Now that I'm looking at this Lord list, of the Rings and Nemo, two blockbusters. Right. Now that I'm looking at this list... So I think we're... we're oh, and at, and at number one? Yeah. At number one, Kangaroo Jack. <laughs> you, you no, know, hold on. Why are you trying to attach me to Kangaroo Jack? That is cheating. <laughs> that is just cheating. I've never said anything about you're, it. You're attaching me to Troy when I made a, a throwaway con a comment that now I'm going to retract, and I'll tell you why. I came out and I said, hold uh, on. Troy's going to be a flop, and then you said, I bet you it won't be. Hold on. But, but Going on what I'm seeing now and based on what these movies made last year, I'm going to have to say you can't say $100 million means the movie's a smash. I was wrong about that. Okay. Listen to the movies last year that made a hundred, excuse me, yeah, a hundred million dollars. Daddy Daycare. Wow. How to Lose a Guy in Ten Days. Freaky Friday. SWAT. <laughs> oh, God. Mm. Uh, too Fast, Too Furious. <laughs> Did that make a hundred million? 
Too Fast, Too Furious made 127 million. Okay, I, you see, I don't think. Yeah, I think 300 million. And is hold the on, two fifty to three hundred for the blockbuster. Hold on, right. cheaper by the dozen. <laughs> How much does that make? One hundred and thirty-eight million dollars. And I bet it didn't cost that much to make. Of course not. I, no. I read it on and that's why Steve Martin just, just okay. drones along. Let's stop this argument then, because right. based on this criteria, and I am going to have to. If, if this, Are you going to yield to the gentleman from New England? If this means I am, uh, you know, giving in, yes. Okay. Because. The criteria has changed. I was going with a, a set of figures that are antiquated by what I had thought was a smash. This movie will not be a smash. And the movie that will be a smash will be the one coming out. I mean, that Shrek is going to make $300 million. Yes. But what about the, your disaster movie? <sighs> $300 million? It'd be tight. No but, way. But I, I don't think so. No way. I, I don't think they have to Hold tomorrow. On. Mm. Hold on. It's going to be a big hit. Too Anger fifty. management. Anger management. That, that was, was a big hit, wasn't it? The movie that Buzz and I are, and oh. our wives walked out yeah, on. Yeah, hated it. $136 million. Yeah, any movie can make that, apparently. I, I really think with, with the proper distribution, mm -hmm. that's the way it goes now. Daredevil made $100 million. And then there's a lot of, there's a lot of movies that just How almost... How much did Gili make? Uh, hold on. i got to scroll down. Way <laughs> down. Gili. 9.3. 9.3 million. E, that Ow. really, when you see some of the movies that made 100 million, it right, makes you realize that a movie doesn't even make 10 million dollars. All right, right, hold on. Before we break, I'll give you one, two, three, four, five movies. Tell me which of these five made 100 million dollars. Oh, it's going to be hard for you. Yeah. Okay. Made 100 million dollars. And some of them have. Yes. All right. Uh, old school. Oh God, yes. No. You're kidding me. Hmm. Old school, $75 million. What? Hmm. That was a big hit on DVD, though. Charlie's Angels Full Throttle. I'll say that made $100 million. Just barely. Okay. $100,800,000. How about Kangaroo Jack? Uh -oh. I'll say that easily made $100 million. $46 million. Oh, okay. All right. 40, oh. Uh, hold on. I just lost it. So you've confused you, you never know. What, I just, what happened to the screen? Oh, here it is. Hold on. Um, Legally Blonde 2. Oh, that made a lot of money. Make a hundred million? Yeah. No. No. Ninety million. All right. Uh, how about? Let me find one more for you. Oh, uh, oh, Eddie Murphy, The Haunted Mansion. No disaster. Seventy-five million. Yeah, didn't do very, and very oh. expensive to make. Seventy-five million dollars for that movie. So listen, uh, under that, under those rules, Troy's not a smash. No, and 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 Troy. They were thinking that that would, that would make the, the big mm -hmm. bucks. Were they thinking that's going to make $300 million? I bet they were. Then yeah. they need to have their head examined. Well, they, they really do. I mean, look at the... God, you look at the trailer for it. I mean, obviously, a phenomenally expensive movie. You didn't find the trailer to be erotic? <laughs> <laughs> oh, erotic? Yeah. yeah. Of course. Anyway. I, mean, really, I know one way to make it better. That's the argument with, uh, with uh, Smasher Trash on Troy. One of the problems with Troy, they said, was the fact that it got the R rating, that that's causing a problem. The violence. And because they, because the, the younger people can't go to see it. But I still don't think young people are going to go to see a movie about Achilles. No, they're not. They're, they're all going to go see Cheaper by the Dozen. <laughs> <laughs> that, stupid movie made, that stupid movie made $138 million. And day after tomorrow is your kind of movie. I know. I mean, you're going to go see that. It's, you got your favorite actor in it. I know. Al Gore it, says you should see it. I know. I've seen it. I've seen Independence Day. I know it's one of those movies. Uh -huh. I know it's one it of those looks really cool. blockbuster disaster and movies I that I love. movies like that most of the time, but right. this looks very cool. I, I love it. So anyway, uh, that's, see, that's what you get for being a sensitive guy. Mm -hmm. That's what you get for being a guy who's open enough to his gay side to say, hey, mm -hmm. you know what? Look at that Brad Pitt. Mm-hmm. Boy, is he cute with that short hair. <laughs> I think that movie's going to make... Uh, who cares what it's going to make? I just want to argue about it with Mike. <laughs> you feel, it's kind of tough. I just want to argue about Brad Pitt with Mike. It's hard. Brad Pitt. <laughs> yeah. And not in the entire debate. Not once. And I want you to remember this. Did I ever use the word fag? Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. Thank you. I'll tell you what, though, that Brad Pitt, you know what he's met married to? I'm not the beautiful lady from Chicago. Beautiful lady. Mm -hmm. Jennifer Aniston. She is. She's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike. This is the Don and Mike Show. A bitter cold night. The Giants with a victory against the Eagles tonight. Could reduce the edge to a half a game. I'm not on camera now. We're in Philadelphia at 
Franklin Field. The score, the New York football Giants 13, the Philadelphia Eagles 9. Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe. Hey, what happened? I don't know. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Who is Jim Morrison. Wait till you hear what they done did. The Don and Mike Show. No, we didn't. Didn't. No, we didn't. Didn't. We didn't do that. We did not. We didn't. I didn't. Hello, Don and Mike show. Uh, Britt. Yes. Hi, Britt. Hi. How are you? We're fine. How are you? I'm great. Don, Mike. Yeah. Uh-huh. Bert? Yeah. Oh, you got a breaking news story coming? Yeah, always, sir. Okay, I don't want to burst your bubble. Uh, yes, you do. We have a newsmaker who's what dying to what trump you. What do you have for me? <laughs> uh, Tony Randall. Up, you know, oh, I wish I had known that. Dude, got to ask your name. Yep, absolutely. Britt? Especially after yep. all that hype. It's out of my hands, Britt. Britt, what's your last name? No, just initial. Just initial. What's your last initial, Britt? What's your nas- last initial, Britt? H. Where are you calling from? What city? Uh, Tracy. Tracy? California. Tracy, California. What city's that near, Tracy, California? No, it's uh, about an hour from Sacramento, oh. about an hour from San Francisco. Oh, okay. Before before we uh, put this guy in the book for uh-huh. being so dumb, I just want a shout out, uh, a really big shout out to Sacramento. Mm-hmm. I love, and I am not kidding now. I do love Sacramento. I know you do. I love it. It's a great city. Yeah. And I was thinking about Sacramento after I was watching what happened at the Kings game the other night. The big brouhaha. Sacramento is simply a slightly sl- smaller Baltimore, and that is, uh, that's a compliment. Mm-hmm. Baltimore has a chip on its shoulder. Right. The, the city of Baltimore, no matter what you say, it's a beautiful city. They say, yeah, but what? Right. Yeah, but what? Right. Sacramento, even more so. Mm-hmm. The other night, I don't know which guy it was for the Kings. Maybe it's the guy that got suspended. I, I told you. You told the guy with the hand in the face? I told Mike we weren't on the radio the other day. But during a break, I said, I'm watching the Kings game, and this guy's guarding Kevin Garnett, simply the best NBA player, right. in the, even better than Kobe. And the guy for the Kings, he's just putting his hand just to mess with him, right? Two inches mm-hmm. in front of the guy's face. <laughs> like, it's it's not really against the rules. Right. But it's one of those things. But it's that, just obnoxious. Yeah, and they end up getting into a fight. And then <laughs> 17, <laughs> they give away those some those annoying, what are those sticks that they, the thunder sticks? Right. right. With, with the little like, pom-poms on them? No, no, the thunder sticks are those things that they had at the Angels oh, game. Oh, there you go. Blah, blah, blah. I think that they're those sticks that make noise. Anyway, all the Sacramento fans got this. 17,000 of them. Go down on the floor. <laughs> the way to go. Yes, way <laughs> to go, Kings. There. Anger. Way to go, Kings. It's an angry little town. <laughs> I hope I hope Sacramento takes Minnesota because I'd like nothing better than to see Sacramento beat the Lakers. Be fun. I really would. That would be f- and, and listen, window of opportunity for Sacramento. That window is closing every day. Very very mm-hmm. exciting. It's a great time to be a basketball fan in Sacramento. And having said all of that, now you, my dumbass friend, you're going in the book. Oh, what, he thought he could hang up? Did we get his number? We, let's see. Did we have it? I was pontificating. Yeah, I gave it to Hefe already. Oh, Alex, Good. Alex, would you get a, get his number, please? Get him on the phone. Yes, because you have to be uh, you have to take your medicine when you're put in the book. Tim that's H. Right. Tim is H. Is his name. Mm-hmm. I thought oh, it was Britt. 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 That's right. Britt. I'm H. sorry. Britt H. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the book because we we covered this earlier about. I mean, the, really, at the very yeah. beginning, the old Lenny Goldberg. Mm-hmm. Lenny Goldberg at the beginning of the show. We had significant time spent talking right. about we even it. Had a, we even had a brief tribute to it. And, you know, I called Rob, and I never call Rob about celebrity deaths. I called Rob today, and, of course, Rob knew, had known, and was notified by Don, which mm. means you get the nod unless Buzz called you. No, no, no I'm I the stayed winner. out of it. You get, you get the nod. I'm the winner. And uh, I thought I'd be late to the party, and that was at about, uh, I would say, one thirty today. Mm. Yeah. Just another sign that my son is growing up and, and maturing. Uh, wise beyond his years. I got his voicemail. You want to leave him a message? Yeah. Right. yeah. Just tell me when you get to the beep. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Oh, sorry. What's his name, Robbie? Britt. Uh, Britt. Hey, it's Don and Mike. Even though you hung up, we got your number from caller ID, and because you didn't know that we knew that Tony Randall was dead. Yeah, and we discussed it at length at the beginning of the show. This is for you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Way to go. 
You've been selected as a charter member in the Don and Mike Exclusive Listeners Club. Yes, you have. You are now a registered Don and Mike caller and are entitled to all the privileges that come with said title. Listen to that. You're to watch your mailbox for your registered Don and Mike caller sign. For your neighbors. To be placed prominently in your front yard. For your neighbors. You have been profiled, tagged, and you are now in the book. Good day. Hi, good day. I said good day, sir. There he is, the voice of the Don and Mike Show, Dude Walker. Good day. Mm-hmm. Number seven or eight, right? Or eight. Number nine? Number nine now. Number nine. So. Number nine. Number, is it number nine? Zero, 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 nine. Well, he'll never, he'll never uh, darken our airwaves again. Thank goodness. We got, his, we got his name. We got his number. So I'm on the phone with Rob today, gleefully. Uh, and, and my son, who I have no complaints with now, it's like all Good. of a sudden somebody turned on. The maturity switch. Right. He's no longer 19 going on 14. Mm-hmm. He's 19 going on 20 now. Good. Got a job. Got his sleep in order. Mm-hmm. He's, he's pleasant to be around. Excellent. Free and I are really enjoying his company. We're so glad he got through whatever well, this good news. awkward time is. It? And this mm-hmm. morning, uh, I don't even have to wake him up. He's like up at 9.30 to get cleaned up to go to work. And he's downstairs and we're talking. And we're talking, and I see on the TV that Carl Tony Randall's dead. Right. And I said, hey, Bart, hold on a second. I got to call somebody. Mm-hmm. I, go, I go, hey, Rob, did you hear? Rob said, what? He said, no, come on, don't play with me. Do you know who's dead? Rob said, who? And I said, Tony Randall. And Rob said, oh, you got me. Yeah, because we all like to be first with the news. <laughs> and it's, it's uh, our little morbid thing that we do. You can ask Rob, at the exact moment that I'm saying this, uh, my, my son starts saying, oh, that's funny, Dad. That's funny. When you die, I'm going to call Rob when I find your body, and I'm going to say, hey, Rob, guess what? I bet you didn't know this. My dad is dead. Oh, you know God. that sound when a real loud voice is like five foot yeah. off the phone? Sure. Right here. Oh, real nice, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Real nice. But he, sure like, knows oh. to, he, he sure knows how to put it in perspective. Yeah. And yeah. Was, yeah. yeah, I like it when he also collectively now just gets a conscience. Yeah, and I'd like to, he could say something to me about Columbine or whatever, you know. And generally, he doesn't say right. mean spirited things. He's a good kid, but right. he'll say stuff eventually. And he's just busting my balls, right? But it it was it was funny with Rob. <laughs> it was funny, not not good, Dad, mm-hmm. not good. Yeah. And uh, the other thing that happened to me at home today, uh, my wife is out working again. Thank Jesus for that. Jesus we got the whole family working now. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. oh, thank you, Jesus. Jesus <laughs> Thank you. So the bathroom is still not done. No. Incidentally, you're the, kidding. I've got, you know, I'm not even wasting your time with it. Wow. Do you know? I the, thought it was supposed to be done by now. The toilet is there. <laughs> the toilet was there. And there is one... Two weeks ago. There's one sink. There is still no shower. There is still no bathtub. There is still no second vanity. Wow. There are still... You know, I don't want to pry, but can I ask you a question about this little uh, endeavor? <laughs> yeah. You... You've got a flat fee you're paying for this, right? Yeah, which is why I think... he's not going to pop some labor costs on you at no, the end of this. No, 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 no. This is one, one, one price gets it all. Okay. It's just that, you know, we thought, you know, and my wife... Well, says, then I don't know how this guy's making money. My wife says it's, it's her fault. Right. That, because she's ordered all this, all this junk that, that we don't uh, really need. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm on the phone trying to figure out when they're going to come out and, and fix the bathroom stuff, and then ding-dong, the, the, the doorbell rings. Right. So I go to the doorbell, and I am not kidding you. It's a guy that's going door-to-door selling burial plots. Eee. Now, I mean, like, creepy, like, six feet under stuff. Wow. Hello, little girl. Yeah, right, I'm not kidding. Can I come in? I answer the door. The guy's got on... <laughs> The guy's got on a short sleeve button down shirt. Of How are you? And really, what appears to be a clip on time. Are you familiar with the fact that you're on an Indian burial block? So he's not. He's not getting in my house. He's Wait a minute! Like, he's coming door to door to sell burial plots. Yes. Jesus! I yes. call the police. <laughs> Mike, there are all kinds of peddlers. Oh yeah. my. Even God. Even the fancy of mis- fanciest of McMansion neighborhoods. Door to door. What, you're coming out to door my door. house, invading my privacy, said, hey, and you can talk about me dying and where I'm going to be right. buried? Hey, if you got a minute, there's, there's a, we've got a place. I'm going in this neighborhood. You know, anyway. Oh, man, I'd say I'm thinking of the backyard and slam the door. Well, there, you know, there are too many guys that come to the door. There's, the, there's oh. all the guys that come to the door. Hey, hello, would you like your trees cut? Hello, do you need the mulch put in? Do you would, need, I would, so, I'd be so mad. So anyway, it's, just, it's one of the endless parade of guys. Your that recording up. time is about to expire. <laughs> oh, oh, you've been know. leaving it on. The whole thing, seconds. you've been leaving it on that guy's mouth. Oh, that's oh, good. Well, hey, that's good. That's a benefit. All right, good.
Yeah. You didn't follow my to suggestion. Send this with message now. Well. Press pound. You didn't refer him to Tony Randall's one. Yeah. For additional options, okay, press so nine. I can't get the phone to stop. Mm. The phone is locked on that. Can you see that? Message oh, now. Press pound to replay your Oh my message. God. We're tied into that idiot from Sacramento forever. <laughs> See, look at that. It won't go away. Or Tracy. Tracy Gallagher. Right. To replay your message, no. press three. What? What'd you do? What did I do? I'm standing there. I didn't do anything. What Hello? I... Hi, Rob. Oh, hi, Don. Hi, Mike. Hi, Rob. 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 Hi, this guy calls me, or no, the guy calls me then about the bathroom. Then the guy shows up to want to sell me burial plots. <laughs> and while the guy is standing there wanting to sell me burial plots. Are you listening to his pitch? No, I'm trying to tell him in a polite way. I'm not interested. Right, right. Uh, the phone rings. And I go and I, I get the phone, and it's uh, Beth Ann. And she, our, our new producer. producer. Our new producer. Yeah. She says, hey, how you doing? And, and I didn't know how to tell her, you know, this is really the wrong time. And I want her to get the wrong impression of me. Right. I've only met her three or four times. Mm -hmm. She's our new producer. She'll start in a couple of weeks. Right. She's coming from Raleigh-Durham. Mm -hmm. So she's all excited and saying, I found a place to live, and, no, and no. things are great, and I can't wait, and I really, I'm so happy for the opportunity. And finally, says, listen, Beth Ann, this is really great, but this is just not a good time for me. There's a guy here trying to sell me a, a funeral, a, a burial plot right now. <laughs> and I know that she, maybe she thought I'm, either she thinks I'm crazier than when she came for the interview, right? Or she thought I was just blowing her off. Well, but I mean, I'd, no. you, I'd, that'd be a tough one to make up. Yeah. I and so there's a guy at the front door trying to sell me a burial plot. It's really not a good thing. And really, you know, burial plot's nice. Really say what it is. There's a guy that's trying to sell me a grave site. Yeah. I, I, I said, so I got to tell me where I'm going to be buried. Mm -hmm. said, so, Beth Ann, I got to go. It's, I'll see you when you start. And and she said, well, oh, okay. I just wanted to say, and, I, and then, then I was just, I was frazzled yeah. because I still got the the guy, the creepy guy, standing on my front porch. Someone you work with? They interested in where they want to be buried? <laughs> so I just, I said to her, listen, I'm glad to have you on the team. I'll see you when you get here. And then she said, well, now that's the same thing that Rob said to me. Glad to have you on the team. And I'm looking at the phone like. It's, listen, bitch, what do you want from me? You got the job. You got the job. Just come up here. There's a creepy guy that wants to sell me a hole that he wants to bury me in. So anyway, Beth, Beth Ann, you, you caught me at a at a bad time. Sure. You caught me at a bad moment. Well, it's, you know, she'll have to understand. You can explain it to her when uh, she gets here. Mm -hmm. I will. I will. I'll explain it to her in depth when she gets Looking here. Looking forward to that. Uh, and sometime... Soon, she's mm -hmm. going to be here. Right? I believe June first is uh, June one. Oh, June first is the day that I think they've targeted for for her starting. Here. Very good. Mm -hmm. So God knows, God knows we need her. Mm -hmm. You're looking forward to it, right, Rob? <laughs> I think it'd be nice to have another person around the place. <laughs> Rob. Rob's the one's gonna have to break her in. Yeah, break in old B A. Tell her all the tell her all of the backstories. Tell her all of the all of the idiosyncrasies about working with us. Hi, Beth Ann. <laughs> Welcome. No, but, no, the thing is, uh, <laughs> Rob's not bitter because Rob knows that the producer's job just isn't his. I bag. know. It's just right. he's. But I've listened to his commentary. It's just funny. Yeah. It's like, no, but you know, welcome. <laughs> It'll be good. I'll actually look forward to it. There's lots of best stuff for her to play. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Rob hates. That's a job Rob hates. Yeah, like no going, especially now with the FCC, we can't play stuff that we did like a year ago. Right. right. So they got to go through and they got to edit out all this stuff. <laughs> Today, when does when, when does Beth Ann start? It's like, uh, June first. Good, she can get right on Best Dog. <laughs> first thing, right on. Get on it. She's edited tape. That's <laughs> she. Welcome. Here, Come right down to this studio. Up down here. Here, here we have a place for you here. Well, she's going to be a, a great down halfway down the hall. If you need anything, I'll be down here. She is going to be a, a great addition to our, uh, to yeah. our little show. Oh, very nice. and, and you're going to like her. She's, uh, hey, we all need a woman around the house. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy to say that we didn't go with, with type here. We didn't go, go get some young... With no... Listen, she's a, a handsome woman, not mm -hmm. that it has anything to do with her getting the job, but we didn't go out and, and get some uh, bimbo like Donald Trump marrying for the third or fourth time. Right. right. Yeah. We, we got the best person for the job, not a producer. Not a trophy producer. Who happens to be a <laughs> real producer. Right, Buzz. That's right. Yeah. She happens, we didn't do a... Don, you are on the air, sir. Uh, no chance I'm leaving her. Uh -huh. I'm, not, I'm leaving my wife to run away with Beth Ann. All right. No chance. Mm -hmm. Okay? She's... Well, you never know until she gets here. Yeah. Well, I pretty much... We all ought to be ready. You know, just see yeah. what happens. No, I mean, we're all one big family here. I made up my mind at the interview. This is just like a... I had to make sure. Yeah. I had to make sure there was no, nothing romantic but between she and I. Well, that's good. But I do that with every woman that I meet, Mike. With yeah. every woman, because you never know. And you know, some men. You did that when I started here. You never yeah. know when the charisma is. I can't. There's no off switch for the charisma. I know. It's
it's just nonstop. You know what I'm saying? Right? It's, it's inconceivable. You I can't help it. it. I ooze it. Mm -hmm. I ooze it. So I oozed it out and, and didn't get nothing from her. You're constantly oozing. She couldn't. She couldn't be a better choice. Uh, she's our age. She's got a kid, mm -hmm. a grown-up kid. Right. She brings all of that to the show, and she's going to actually do producer jobs. Yeah, and she is a fantastic cook. And she makes the <laughs> mean cup of joke. Uh -huh. <laughs> Mike, she's promised she'll get your chicken wings every day. Isn't that exciting? She'll have my diet vanilla Cokes in here every day. And she really, what sealed it is when she said your whites will never be whiter. <laughs> and all your straight. seams will be straight. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I got one more in-house thing to take care of here. I'd love to use the inside line. It's stand up still. Oh, hold on. There, it just went free. Thank you. I do want to ask Alex a question. Uh, we had him on a second ago. Hello? Hey, Hefe? Kind of Joe? Kind of went dead there. The line just went Tony Randall on us. Oh, no. There we go. All right. Oh, and we got the Joe Mose to get to, the second half of Joe at NASCAR. Yeah. Uh, Joe, or who's this, Joe or Alex? Alex. Alex, listen, first off, uh, Alex Jimenez, you do a show every night on WJFK. Yes, at, at 11 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. Now, explain to me the schedule, because you, you mentioned to me a second ago you're tired, and I can understand it. You come in to help us out, and you've been nice enough to come in during the interim period here. Right. Before Beth Ann starts. So we've got Alex back there helping us. Then he helps out Ron and Fez, who are the guys on after us. Mm -hmm. And then he does his own show. Wow. Yeah, how many? Two, three hours? Uh, two hours. Two, two hours. hours. So what is your average work day, Alex? About 13 hours. And I'm, we're not talking like... 13 hours where you're just around. I mean, you get here, and you are here at the facility for 13 hours. Yes, I, there will be no one happier to see Beth Ann than me. Okay. Because I've got the duties of going through the old best ofs, then, of course, doing what we do during the show, doing the stuff with Ryan Fez, and then trying to do a show for two hours at the end of the night. Yeah, but you got to say, you, I, I, you got to say, between us and Ron and Fez, you, there's, no, there's no better school, my man. Absolutely. We, we're, trying, we're trying to learn you good. And here's the problem with Alex. The problem is he works these hours, and he still lives in Mexico. <laughs> a long commute. He still it's, commutes every day. And, yeah, by car. <laughs> Alex Jimenez. It's, it's very, very tight. So you work on average of 13. You, you get here at what time every day? I get here sometime between 12.30 and uh, 12.30 and 2. Christ, and you leave what, like at 2 or 3 in the morning? I, I'm out of here usually by 1.30. Man, you must love radio. Well, good for wow. you, Alex. Yeah, I do. Thank you, guys. Good for you. Yeah, good and, you know, for you young broadcasters out there, it's kind of the way you do it. How yeah, that's what he's doing right now would be described as paying dues. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Smelling Dennis Murphy's breath today, that was paying dues. You Thank know what, really? 13-hour work day, Alex, and you come in and you did that with Dennis. I, I, my hat's off to you. We appreciate it. I appreciate it, guys. All right. Looking forward to that F and vodka. Okay. okay. <laughs> Help yourself to it. Go for it. All right. Bye, Alex. Bye -bye. Oh, man. I, I'm so proud. I need drinks, too. Yeah. <laughs> God, that just that makes me smile. <laughs> so does Beth Ann. And she drinks, too? That matters at all to you. Yeah, you already did that recon? <laughs> you bet I did. <laughs> you know, well. Kind of nice to have. We always like to, you know, it's our weakness. And, she, know. and she's like us. Maybe one of those things where in the past there was something that maybe happened one time. <laughs> Ah, you know what I mean. There you go. One of those things you just keep under the radar. Sure. One of those things, you know, back in the go-go 80s. Of course. Back in the go-go go, go, -go 90s. You go, go in the in the go-go 2000s. <laughs> yeah, really back was. in the day in the 2000s. <laughs> oh, we, oh, we got one more call to make. Sales manager Julie Fullman. Uh, she's here now? Yes, we can find out why there's a prayer bench <laughs> outside the uh, reception is. area. She will it's, know. It's a prayer bench. Mm -hmm. Buzz identified it correctly. It is, it's a, a pew. Uh, she uh, somebody is uh, give us a heads up that she's here. Go, she was in her office. She was there. Is she ignoring our calls? Come on now, Julie. She's very busy. You see, there is a prayer bench outside the, the front desk. Robert, you're going to go down, and Rob's going to go down and fetch her, pat it like something you'd kneel on to pray. And it really, there are some. Mr. Coleman, I'm wondering if there's a chance. There are some. There are some kooky fashion choices made around this radio station. Well, she's the point person, and she has that uh, Art Deco. Whacked out sensibility. I'll give her a compliment. I think that her decorating choices remind me very much of the TV show Carolina the City. <laughs> very good. If you remember, oh, is this Julie calling us now? Hello? This is Julie. Hi, Julie. It's Don and Mike. How about when I call you and I act like I'm answering my phone? Okay, can you, can you pick up for a second? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm on my headset. Oh, okay. Wait, you're, oh, you're, you're on your headset. Goddamn set. Julie? Yes? Why? Hey, hold on. Hey, Robbie? Yes? Did your wife get the headset, too? Yes. So did my wife. Oh, that's so ridiculous. Yes. I, I, you know, when I was in the Boston Chicken the other day buying my lunch, three chickens, 
And <laughs> there was a lady in there that was on a headset on her cell phone talking just full volume. Like, yeah. I'm on my headset. I'm important. I don't know why you have a problem with it. This is really what's going to help Carrie spend a lot of time on the phone because it's always been such a problem. <laughs> um, Julie, that you're in charge of furniture here. Wait, what is that thing that you put in front of the Why is there a prayer bench in the, uh, in the reception area? The bench? Yeah, yeah the prayer bench. The pew. <laughs> what, what what function? I'm sorry, I didn't... I, it, well, you know the, the lobby is very weird shaped. Yes. yes. Okay, and sometimes, like when you guys do contests and stuff, we have a lot of people in there. Yes. So we don't really have room for any, like, normal piece of furniture. Yeah. Yes. So I found that wacky little bench, and I thought if we had a lot of people in there, that then they could sit on it so they wouldn't have to sit on the floor. Have you um, actually is... tried to sit on it where it's located right now? The bench is, like, three feet long, right? <laughs> and maybe maybe 12 inches wide, maybe? You could put Mike's three chickens on it. Well, you know, seriously, I sat on it because, you know, when I see a piece of furniture, it's just the kind of thing I do. And unfortunately, the body position that's required to sit on that bench, you have to lean forward, almost like someone is performing the Heimlich maneuver on you. And it's just a little weird. It's in case of emergencies. Okay. In case of emergency, I'm telling you, cheating, yeah. if you get a chance, come down to the radio station. Just look at it. Yeah, yeah, stop you, look at it. Sit on it. What the F? What's right going on. on there? I will sit down with anyone who wants to sit on that bench. I think three people can sit quite comfortably on that bench. Well, it, three, may three be the, it may be the location, too. It's yeah, located. The location is not good. We're going to move it to uh, that's fine. the window. See, because the location's right in front of the window, like if you were going to go and give confession. <laughs> if, if you got down Colette. and you kneeled and you opened the window, and what if it was Colette there? And you say, you know, <laughs> forgive me, Colette, for I have sinned. Sure. Listen. Bless me, Colette. Oh. Right, so. Yeah, you've been out of it a long time, haven't you? Yeah, I have. <laughs> <laughs> and what a and what a dumb ritual that is. As a bless former... me, bless me, Colette, for I have sinned. It has been six weeks since my last confession. Bye, Julie. Thank Bye, you. Bye, bye. Bye. As a former Catholic, I tell you what a bunch of bunk. You go in there, you sit there. I had to do this. I went to CCD every week when yes, I was so did I. You go, you sit there, and you go, oh, Father, I did awful stuff this week. I pulled out my brother's hair, and I set some other guy's hair on fire, and I kicked some guy in the thing, and I called my mom a bad name, and I took the Lord to him. Okay, uh, two Hail Marys, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Right. That's how business is done. You say a prayer. <laughs> you say a prayer, make it all better. Say a little prayer. I would figure it out. I'd sit there and go, Hail Mary, full of grace, blah, blah. Blah, blah. You know, then my mind would just start to just... You uh, mean you wouldn't say the prayer that the priest gave you to say? No. Oh, oh, oh my God. God. No business. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Everyone, get out of the studio now. How can you... There's a thunderstorm coming. <laughs> How do you fancy the hocus pocus is going to work if you don't say all the magic words? <laughs> exactly, wow. Rob. Exactly. <laughs> Welcome to Protestant's Corner, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Got a break. Uh, we'll be back. Uh, it's Joe next? Yes. Joe next. Yeah, Joe, yeah, yeah. Joe Mo's at NASCAR. This is the Don and Mike Show. This is the Don and Mike Show. And this you should not do. You should not say he's an animal. He's a, should not say he's Jacko. I'm not a Jacko. D -D for everybody. Hey, you're Jacko. Call him Jacko. Jacko. Anyone can share the deed. This you should not do. You should not say he's an animal. He's a. You should not say he's Jacko. That's right, Michael. <laughs> and BD, not just for Michael Jackson. No way. I'm not the I'm not the beautiful lady from Chicago. <laughs> Broadcasting from the right side of the dirt, the Don and Mike Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Todd Rundgren. Another genius. A lot of musical geniuses out there. He's another one of them. Absolutely. Todd Rundgren. You know who else is a musical genius? Not Joe Ardinger. But he's the world's oldest phone screener. And I do love the Joe Mo's. Everybody does. It's time for another edition of Joe Mo's. Joe Mo's. Joe Artinger, Man on the Street. We uh, started this yesterday, and we're not able to finish it up. We have a couple interviews left. This was a real special one, sending Joe down to Richmond, Virginia, to the big NASCAR race. Yep. Uh, Joe was there Saturday night. Uh -huh. uh, Dale Jr. won the, uh, whatever it was, 400-mile race. 
That makes a lot of people happy. NASCAR, here's uh, Joe. We've heard, I think, three or four of these. There's three or four more to go. Very good. Here's Joe with the prepared questions. As the day gets longer, the sun gets hotter, <laughs> and the beer gets tastier <laughs> at NASCAR. Hello. I am Big Joe Ardinger from NASCAR on CBS. Okay. May I ask you a few questions Take for broadcast? Yes. What is your name and where are you from? Sean. I'm from Richmond. What brings you to NASCAR on this fine evening? Oh, I love it. I come every year. Ain't these cars fast? Yes, sir. Who is your favorite driver? You know, we may have we may have just found yeah. the perfect guy. Sure, absolutely. Because his response to "Ain't these cars fast?" <laughs> he, he got that right. Yeah. Kevin Harvick. Isn't he the dead one? No. <laughs> He's not dead. Do, do you like that gay driver? What gay driver? What was his name again? I don't know his name. It is now the year 2004. What year do you think we'll see the first African-American Nextel Cup Series winner? Come on. Uh, probably 2020. Yeah, hey, 16 little, years. A little further yeah. down the road. 2020. 2020. I reckon. I don't know. How do you think the cicadas will affect tonight's race? <laughs> I don't think they're going to affect tonight's race. Who do you think will win Survivor? Survivor? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Again, just so you know the joke, and mm -hmm. you know if you don't know the joke, <laughs> right. it's your problem. Come on, <laughs> just hit the microphone. Yeah. Hamburger, a hamburger, uh -huh. Am <laughs> hamburger, <laughs> hamburger, hamburger. Uh, Boston Rob's having an hamburger. Yes, he is with <laughs> with cheese. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope no ketchup. Mm, oh, and you know what? I hope no. I hope that's just a, just an hamburger. Mm -hmm. I mean, anything would be bad. Mustard would be bad. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Mayonnaise. Yeah, mayonnaise would be real dangerous. Relish. Relish, very, very bad. Onions. <laughs> Goes without saying. <laughs> uh, okay, back to the tape. Here we go. I can't remember. What were you, what were your feelings when you first heard about the death of James Garner? James Garner? I don't know him either. In your opinion, what is an acceptable percentage of minorities in attendance at a NASCAR event? Here we go. Many want to come. Okay, now that, that's that's more than nice. Yeah. And I'd like to comment that, that so far all the uh, the NASCAR fans have been very well behaved with that question. Mm -hmm. Do you think Tony Stewart learned to drive real good from his dad, Jackie Stewart? <laughs> no. No. In your opinion, or have you seen the new pictures of Jeff Gordon on the internet? No. In your opinion, why did the South lose the Civil War? Hey, they were stupid, I guess. Because they were stupid, I guess. They were stupid, I guess. I wish he'd said, I reckon. <laughs> they were stupid, I guess. They were stupid, I guess. It has been said that Dale Sr. died because God needed a driver. Where do you think God needs to be driven to? I have no clue. Okay. Is, uh, how many teeth are in the average human head? In the human head? 32. How many teeth are in your head? 32. You got it. Since I'm a bit... Since I am a Vietnam veteran, <laughs> would you like to thank me for my service to our country? You're not a Vietnam veteran. <laughs> hey, finally. Winner. Finally. Winner. Winner. Somebody called him on it. That's good. <laughs> you're, not, you're not a Vietnam veteran. That's right. Gee, do you think so, Sparky? Yeah, <laughs> but he didn't know James Garner is still alive. Can you share a positive experience regarding Goody's brand headache powder? <laughs> no. Aren't you glad the FCC has cleaned up radio? Yes. Do you find me attractive? No. <laughs> Thanks for your time, man. And you know he made you miss Bobby Lamotti. I know he did. Oh, there she comes. He, he made you Joe miss. Moe. He made you miss Bobby Labonte. Rob, I didn't quite hear her in the background. What was she saying exactly? <laughs> <laughs> you missed him me seeing Bobby Labonte. Joe Moe. <laughs> Here's another one from Saturday Night Richmond. Hello. I am Big Joe Ardinger from NASCAR and CBS. Can I ask you a few questions taped for broadcast? Sure. What is your name and where are you from? Uh, Kelly, I'm from Canada. What brings Canada. you to NASCAR this fine evening? Uh, love racing. Ain't these cars fast? They are. <laughs> Who is your favorite driver? Uh, Casey King. Isn't he the dead one? Uh, no. <laughs> Do you like that gay driver? Isn't everybody? Isn't he, uh, what was his name again? <laughs> hey, hey, she threw Joe off. <laughs> well, also, I, I believe at this point, Joe is also being affected by is the heat, or, or do you think maybe there's some adult beverages going on? I know Joe's beverage of choice. It comes in a blue can, right? And it's called Miller Lite. And, and he's, uh, I, think I got so. the impression from the last interview that he was starting to get a little wobbly. Mm -hmm. Based on the reading, you know, uh, I, I, I got him out of order. 
Well, weekend was here. Time to have 30 cans of beer. And I believe he's been blaming the heat. Yeah. Wink, right. wink. Let's go. Big Joe Ardinger. Uh, it is now the year 2004. What year do you think we'll see the first African-American Nextel Cup Series winner? No idea. A good answer. How do you think the cicadas will affect tonight's race? That's a good question. They could fly over. Yes, it is, you dumb bitch. Win survivor. <laughs> is that already done? Oh, hey. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Just called her a dumb bitch, and look at that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She still is, but she knew the survivor was over. She knew. Big Joe Ardinger. Uh, it is now the year 2004. What year do you think we'll see the first... Oh, we just scoot back to that same oh, spot? Yeah. Winner. No idea. Okay, here's the survivor question. How do you think the cicadas will affect tonight? Oh, I forgot this one. Mm, that's a good question. They could fly over. Who do you think will win Survivor? <laughs> is that already done? You got that right. What were your feelings when you first heard about the death of James Garner? <laughs> I didn't know he was dead. Okay. In your opinion, what is an acceptable percentage of minorities in attendance at a NASCAR event? Come on, honey. I have no idea. Do you think Tony Stewart learned mm. to drive real good from his dad, Jackie Stewart? How many more questions are there? <laughs> <laughs> have you seen the nude pictures of Jeff Gordon on the Internet? <laughs> what say you? Not lately. In your opinion, why did the South lose the Civil War? Here we go. I'm from Canada. I wouldn't know. It has been said that Dale Sr. died because God needed a driver. Where do you think God needs to be driven to? <laughs> Good question. How many teeth are in the average human head? <laughs> do you know the answer, lady? No idea. How no many idea. teeth are in your head? <laughs> I got all of them. <laughs> Since I am a Vietnam yeah. veteran, would you like to thank me for my service to our country? Sure. Can you share a positive experience regarding goodies, goodies spray headache, headache powders? powders? Okay. Nope. They don't have it at home. Yeah. Aren't you glad the FCC cleaned up radio? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, the oh, I think mold. the drinking, the drinking effect of the reading ability, and also the subject. Let's Eddie try said. one more. Let, but we've got plenty more. Let's let's try another one. Here's Joe with another person. Hello, I'm Big Joe Ardinger from NASCAR and CBS. May I ask you a few questions, taped for broadcast? Hold on, here is Joe ready to uh, plead his case. Joe, Hi, Joe. I didn't have a beer until about 6 in the afternoon. So you are totally sober. What time, what time was that interview done? Like 4. Oh, so it's done when it was daylight. I mean, it was 100 degrees. I, it, and and I, when track. you have those media passes, you have to wear long pants oh. and a sleeved shirt. That's a drag. I can't walk around like uh, the other 99% of the stadium with no shirt and... Pants halfway down my ass, but they had no all sandals with a cold beard. Right. Right. But they had no all access pass. Right? So, so you're, you're saying the deterioration of the reading is based on heat stroke? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the only reason you had you had heat stroke was because you had to wear long pants. But the only reason you wore long pants because you got the all access pass, right? So it was kind of a trade off. Yeah, it was. But positive. I, I was still exhausted yesterday. I mean, I just started feeling normal today. Okay. And how many beers after six o'clock did you have? Uh. <laughs> uh <laughs> Including last night? <laughs> yeah, including last night. Including last night. Three cases. <laughs> <laughs> he's not exaggerating. Yeah, no, he's not. He's not exaggerating. There you go. Hello. I'm Big Joe Ardinger from NASCAR and CBS. Hi, Big Joe. Two questions taped for broadcast. He's more knowledgeable there. Sure you may. What would you like to speak about? Yeah. Oh, what here we go. What is your name and where are you from? What did the guy say? Sure you may. What would you like to speak about? <laughs> Maybe we got a winner here. Here yeah. we go. Randy Gordon, I'm from Virginia Beach. Okay, Randy. What brings you to NASCAR this fine evening? Well, I got friends here in Richmond, and I love NASCAR, and always follow it on the TV. And yeah, yeah. I'm all about it. Okay. <laughs> He's kind of got that Larry Flint sound to him. Right. <laughs> Maybe we got a winner here. I think these cars fast. You better believe it. Who is your favorite driver? Ryan Newman. Isn't he the dead one? No, he's not the dead one. He's Ryan Newman and Tony Stewart are my favorite drivers, and Ryan Newman is not the dead driver. Do you like that gay driver? I haven't met a gay driver. What was his name again? I haven't met a gay driver. It is now the year 2004. Tricky. What year do you think we'll see the first African-American Nextel Cup Series winner? It's going to be a little while from today. 
A little while from today. <laughs> it's just funny hearing that question asked. That's but a, the comfort level. That's a funny answer. Oh, you, you know, we haven't gotten the one guy that we were home and go, what the hell are you asking that that's for? That's pretty close, though. That answer, yeah. well, ain't going to be today. Hey. No. Wherever he's at. How do you think the cicadas will affect tonight's race? I don't think uh, they'll be involved today. They're too far north. <laughs> Who do you think will win on Survivor? I think uh, Tony Stewart would be fine. What were your feelings Tony, when you first put a driver in Survivor? Tony Stewart survivor. in Survivor. Uh, do all right. about the death of James Garner? Uh, uh, James Garner, the detective, or James Garner, the Hollywood movie star? Uh, hold on. Wait a minute. But aren't they He's the throwing same person? something else. I thought. Is he talking about Rockford? James Garner played Jim Rockford, who was, was a detective, detective on, on TV. Right? Yeah. So which are you talking about, Jim Rockford and, and James Garner? Now, Joe's holding true. He'll just steamroll right through next to the next question. question. Yeah. No, I, I wasn't affected. In your opinion, what is an acceptable percentage of minorities in attendance at a NASCAR event? Everybody and anybody is uh, always welcome. The more the merrier. I like I don't the think consistency. Tony Stewart learned to drive yeah. real good from his dad, Jackie Stewart. No, I think Tony Stewart learned to drive uh, from uh, Indy. Have you seen the new pictures <laughs> of Jeff Gordon on the Internet? What say you? Uh, I haven't seen the pictures, but I like Jeff Gordon. I think he's an outstanding NASCAR driver and a leader in the sport. Like to see him in naked. your opinion, why did the South lose the Civil War? Uh, not enough gunpowder. Oh, <laughs> oh well, that's interesting. Bam. Not enough gunpowder. All right. Yeah. <laughs> we got Frank Kelly in the waiting. I don't want him to wait on this crap. Let's just hear one more. Just All right, very good. Right. Hear, this next one is worth listening to. Hello. I am Big Joe Ardinger from NASCAR and CBS. May I ask you a few questions today for broadcast? I don't think so. How about you? No, thank you. Oh, my. Oh, they yeah. seem nice. <laughs> I'm Big Joe Ardinger from NASCAR and CBS. May I ask you a few questions safe for broadcast? Sure. What's your name and where are you from? Andy McFarlane from Winchester, Virginia. What brings you to NASCAR on this yeah. fine evening? I want to watch the race. Yeah, boy. Ain't these cars fast? <laughs> yes, they are. Who is your favorite driver? Tony Stewart. I hear that. Isn't he the dead one? No, he's not. Do you like that gay driver? No, I don't. <laughs> what was his name again? Jeff Gordon. Yeah. <laughs> it is now the year 2004. What year do you think we'll see the first African-American Nextel Cup Series winner? Come on, 3,000. Didn't know there was any. How do you think the... <laughs> you didn't even get the question. No, I didn't understand. I, think there were, no. I was hoping he'd say, like, 3,000. <laughs> 100 years from now. 3,004. Skaters will affect tonight's race. I don't think they'll have any effect on it tonight. I do Who not. do you think will win Survivor? I have no idea. I don't watch it. What were your feelings when you first heard about the death of James Garner? Who? <laughs> James Garner. <laughs> Never heard of him, man. In your opinion, what is an acceptable percentage of minorities in attendance at a NASCAR event? Here we go. Come on. Zero percent. Oh, think... my wow. God. Not so bad. Oh, yeah. Winner! <laughs> Here you go. That's why we send Joe out to do these interviews. <laughs> oh, knew he was out there. There you go. Yeah. Where's that Dixie music? Oh, you want that? Yeah. You there Joe you go. Mo. There you go. That's a job well done. <laughs> In my, my, my. Let's hear that one again. From NASCAR. Zero percent. Oh, do you think... Back it up with a commercial. Or with the, uh, rather with a question, not the commercial. <laughs> God. Acceptable percentage of minorities in attendance at a NASCAR event. Zero percent. Do you Whoa. think Tony Stewart learned mm. to drive real good from his dad, Jackie Stewart? Nah. Have you seen the nude pictures of Jeff Gordon on the Internet? What say you? No, I can't say I've seen that. In your opinion, why did the South lose the Civil War? Mm. <laughs> uh... Uh, let me say here. Uh, what? Too oh. many other northern soldiers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Too many northern soldiers. Too many of the. And he, and he thought a long time on that one. Yeah. Too many there of were the too many of the northern soldiers. Zero percent. <laughs> it has been said that Dale Senior died because God needed a driver. Where do you think God needs to be driven to? 
Oh, he's struggling. I have no idea. There man. you go. Yeah. Think about it. In the average human head, 32. He got and that. Teeth in your head. All of them. Since I am a Vietnam veteran, would you like to thank me for my service to our country? Sure. Thank you. <laughs> Can Thank you share you. a positive experience regarding Goody's brand headache powders? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Can you share a positive experience regarding Goody's Yo brand headache mode. powders? Never used it. Aren't you glad the SEC has cleaned up radio? There you go. No, I can't say that. Do you find me attractive? No. <laughs> Thanks for your time, man. <laughs> All right, that's the hey, little Joe there, you know. Not thanks for your time. Thanks for your time, man. Mm -hmm. That's uh, Joe at NASCAR. Thanks for listening to Joe Mo. Thank you, Joe Ardinger, man on the street. Oh, wow. well, it only took like five people to get the guy zero percent. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Zero percent. Why, yeah. why the South lose the war? How you doing? Too, Too many, many Northern soldiers. soldiers. <laughs> we got a break. We'll be right back. Uh, we're excited to meet this guy, Frank Caliendo. We are huge fans of Mad TV. We'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. This is the Don and Mike Show. Did you hear I finally graduated? Yeah, and just a shade under a decade, too. All right. You know, a lot of people go to college for seven years. I know. They're called doctors. The Don and Mike Show. Hello. You can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe you. Here we are. I don't like you. Probably never will. You're a spunk, unhappy little man, and you treat people like they were idiots. Thank you. Goodbye. The Don and Mike Show. Bye. Bye. Yeah, are we getting that, that clicking when we get thunderstorms around here? Goodbye. This you should not do. You should not say he's an animal. <laughs> he's a... You should not say he's jackal. 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 Why did you feel clicking? I heard one of those little, you know, those... The clicking sound, like when there's electrical storm activity in the area. Me, no, no. And like a big, giant bolt of lightning. Me, no, no. Come down into our headphones and fry us. Me, no, nothing. <laughs> Here is uh, Frank Caliendo, though. Hey, Frank. Frank. Ah. What Frank. up, dog? Frank, hey. Is, that, is this the wrong station? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you are funny always, and we are huge fans of yours. Well, thank you very much. Back on uh, Mad TV. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and uh, do you know how many people watch Mad TV? Uh, I'm sure you do. It's like five million a, a week. Well, that's a lot. Yeah, but the NFL yeah. and Fox. The, the last one of the last sketches I did was twenty five million. Right. I did a Rush Limbaugh sketch. So that that's about, about seven million. Howie Long once told me he said uh, he goes don't care about the ratings on the show because everybody in a bar is watching this show. Mm -hmm. There are forty guys over at one guy's house just hanging out watching it. Do you get the people like me that say? I mean, I've said it for a long time, and I think there are other people I've heard say the same thing that. You guys have more of an edge than uh, than Saturday Night Live. We're talking about Mad TV now, yeah, Mad, Mad TV. TV. Yeah, Mad think... TV. Because I mean, I always said I started watching that in place of Saturday Night Live, and I and I and I like it more because it just you guys will do a lot of stuff that seems to me to be a little less safe. Yeah, and we're edited, mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. so you can do you can get you can do other things like you can do things with graphics and stuff like that as opposed to SNL, right? Where they they have to do everything live. Pretty much eighty percent of it's probably live. Mm -hmm. They do a couple other little things. But if you've noticed, I, I, and I, this is just an opinion, I think some of their things that are taped have gotten more Mad TV-ish. So right. So right. their their live stuff is always best because it's in the moment. I mean, mm -hmm. you can't beat a live sketch. Uh, as, as if you're going to do like a full sketch for four minutes, you know, it's an acted out sketch with a character. Mm -hmm. You can't beat the live because the energy is there and it's like, oh, my God, you know. You know, I'm going to blow a little smoke because I'm such a, I'm an enormous fan of yours. And one of the things that when I've watched Saturday Night Live, I always said they could use a guy like Frank on Saturday Night Live. They've got some great, a great history of great impressionists on Saturday Night Live. But I think right now they could use, I mean, just the versatility. Well, I, did, you I, I was actually offered it by the president of NBC, not Lorne Michaels. Uh-oh. So mm -hmm. I heard through the grapevine, Jay Moore, Jim Brewer, some other guys that said, basically, you don't want to even try it because if they try and force you onto the show, right. then, then you... And Lauren's dead. not a part of it? And, yeah. Right. And I don't know if I would have gotten it for, for real, mm -hmm. but Jimmy Fallon was there. Right. This was his second year, mm -hmm. and Daryl Hammond was there and was going to be there until he's still there. Right. So it, for me to sit there, I need what I needed to do is I'd never done a sketch off of TV. All I did was I was traveling around doing colleges and uh, you know uh, 
uh, clubs, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I was just doing these impressions, and I'd never acted before. But the best on Mad TV was like the stuff like uh, Rod Roddy. Okay, <laughs> never on Weird. Saturday Night Live. <laughs> never on Saturday and Night Rod, Live. Rod loved Rod loved the impression that I did of him, and he was, and of course, ladies and gentlemen, regretfully yeah. he has passed. When he, when he was showing people yes. at, uh, in his hospital room, the the, the, ski, really? yes, the ski was supposed oh. to walk on. Man, I'm not laughing. He was supposed to walk on to the show, and oh. he was too sick to do it. He oh, loved dear. it. Oh, okay. He was a great guy, and uh, he. Uh, you know, we did this, the final sketch that we did, or I'm sorry, the, the one we did before he passed away, before Mad TV started inventing new ways for me to do it by doing caveman versions and stuff yeah. like that. <laughs> hey, those are funny. You don't like yeah. those? No, they're fine. They're, they're, this one was great, though, because it was Rod Roddy breaking up with his wife. I know. They're all Janet, great. I loved you my entire life. <laughs> I loved me being together forever. And then she says, it's Mo Collins playing uh, his wife, and she's like, I'm sorry, Rod, I want a divorce. <laughs> well, I guess my wife is going to get half of everything I own, including a brand new car! <laughs> and you have to see it. You're oh, wearing the, the baggy best. sequin jacket. Oh, yeah. And you, you get got... the smile, too, with the... Yeah, yeah. 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 that fancy <laughs> smile to the camera right after the line is done. I was actually told in taping one time, don't look at the camera so much. I go, I'm an announcer. <laughs> it's a new car, man. It's a new car, man. <laughs> and the drink from the back seat is some friendship. <laughs> well, I always liked Jimmy Kimmel on the Fox show. You know, he would do stuff that was edgy and come back and those those dopes, most of who have been on the show, so we can call them dopes, would right. like sit there and go, he's not funny, but you know he's funny. So Jimmy Kimmel leaves, and we're thinking, who are they going to get to fill in? When you started... It was a little rocky, but I'll tell you when you absolutely won me over. And it, it wasn't even your performance. It was I felt they were telling you, don't do stuff that where these guys are going to cringe when you come back right. from the break. <laughs> you did a, a bit last year where you played all of the guys, including JB. <laughs> and, yeah. and they put Frank in makeup. And I mean, he didn't do like the, you know, hello, Dad, this am James Brown. Right, I mean, right. he did... Absolutely. It was James Brown. The word, wow. the, the most important words were... Uh, the, the ones that we originally had didn't work. And I'd heard him do this uh, this eulogy for Otto Graham had passed away. And he was like, Otto Graham was a great man. And I heard him do that. <laughs> so we were trying to write the bit. And it was like, uh, J.B. originally was, said, uh, I don't I don't think it's bad. I don't think he's that. I don't think he's bad. And I go, that's not what J.B. would say. I go, personally, I didn't think it was that bad. <laughs> so I kept saying that over. I'm like, personally, I didn't think it was that bad. So you write it around, making so, it sound, yeah, which what, is what it's Because at the about. time, I couldn't right. say other things. Right, right. I could, I could say that, and I just squeaked out, and let's go back to Julian Barber. <laughs> I tried to get that. And so, so when we, I, we we did the bit, for people who didn't see it, which is most people, it's on my website, by the way. You can play it back. It's, uh, uh, is, uh, is there, it's the best thing I've ever done. And it's mad, <laughs> madtvguy.com or frankcaliendo.com. Nobody can spell it. So he does all of the, in this bit, you, did, you were Bradshaw. Bradshaw, Howie Long. Uh, JB and uh, Jimmy. But the JB is the best because it's, at the end they go to a split screen. But yeah. Because which one of them didn't believe that it was really you? JB didn't think that. James it Brown. Was me. He, well, we see, here's the background. <laughs> we had told him that, uh, or we had asked him if it was okay to do him because we didn't know if it was going to be. Right. So, and he's like, uh, he's like, oh yeah, you got to do me. You got to do me. So, he's a great guy. I mean, we've had him on the show Phenomenal. a couple times. He's really got a great, great sense of humor. So, he was, he was great with it. He's like, it'd be wrong if he didn't do it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, he thinks. Well, I'll, I'll set up the bit for you. So I'm at the fake bar, which I did every like <laughs> most of the weeks, and I'm like, uh, listen, Fox usually gives me two two minutes to do these bits. I don't know well, who I ticked off, but I'm only getting thirty seconds this week. Uh, you, you pour Joe Namath a couple of free drinks, and looks what look what happens <laughs> right after that. Uh, Susie so go, Culver, right? So I make the picks and I throw it back to. I go back to you. No, no characters. Back to you guys. As me as Terry Bradshaw. That was not funny, Frank. Not funny. <laughs> not funny. Not funny. That was the. Not funny segment Frank has ever done, Frank. Not funny. <laughs> and then it's Howie. But Howie was a little bit weaker and like he wasn't trying to. He wasn't trying to be funny. He was just making his picks. And then JB personally, I didn't think it was that funny. <laughs> <laughs> you hear it? I didn't see it. Yeah, and hearing it, it's just as great. But uh, you had to. You see. know what? Go to my. Can you see a? If you can see a buzz, can you go, pull it up on the website? All you need is there's a picture of the front first page. Right. Is me as all four guys. Do you have it there, Buzz? So then, what I'm it does, working on it. it. It cuts to. Uh, it cuts to me as Jimmy Johnson. And say, I thought it was great, but how's my hair? And I'm spraying it. <laughs> Cuts to Howie Long. I've got a level on my head. Cuts, Cuts back to Bradshaw. There's a guy with a power buffer. <laughs> on, the, on, the on the bald head. head. <laughs> on the bald head. Now, 
when you do a great bit like that, and that was like a memorable bit. I mean, really, I'm sitting there. I swear to God, I fall on the floor. I'm laughing. How long do you write that? Do you improv that? Do you go in and just shoot stuff? Well, because of a split camera, we're doing or split screen. We're doing a lot of different things. So we shot two on one day. It was it was uh, JB and Terry on one day, and then another day was Howie and Jimmy. So we split them up like that because you have to do it for the sides. You know, the, the you know, there's four right. split up into four. Right. You do two on the left, two on the right, and then put it all together. You know, it's basically put so four it was together. A, it was a table of four mm-hmm. pranks all talking with each other. And the other thing, of course, you're famous for is the Madden. Well, I got to tell you about the Madden because you know I do Madden on this show, and I told Frank before he came in here that the Madden that I do, and I've done that a lot with great impressionists, is I I don't do an impression of John Madden. I do an impression of Frank Caliendo doing. You know, doing John Madden, and I will tell you when I when I got TiVo, the first thing that I that I wore the TiVo out with was the bit that he did on Mad TV. That was a, uh, probably a throwaway bit for you, but it was the popcorn popper. No, that's actually, oh, we uh, both saw that one. Yeah, that I, I, I and I didn't do it because I was trying to learn how to do John. I was I was just watching it because I thought it was the funniest goddamn thing I've ever seen with with you progressively getting more agitated yeah. and then and then and then burning yourself. As John Madden with a hey folks, it was just I, I love that. that. The thing about that is that that's what makes us different from Saturday Live. You couldn't mm-hmm. do that bit. Exactly. No, that'd be impossible to do it because yeah. I mean, because I, really, I think it when you throw in and it's almost all like you know, little Monty Python with the with the with the burn right, makeup right, right. and then you know, you know and blood, the end move, blood spurting. It was a lot stuff. of different things because the end move was kind of Farley-ish. Where I'm like, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Amazing. And then go, dear sweet heaven, what the heck just happened? <laughs> but you, even when you do it on the Fox show, and it's great. Now that Madden left Fox, I guess he's fair game. You saw, well, we did, you I, saw it early I, on when I, he was doing it on the Fox show, yeah. right? You did one. You just eat. Eating, eating chicken wings, <laughs> and you got them all over oh, your yeah. mouth. And I've gotten into a lot of trouble for those. And <laughs> they come back from the break, and you know that the the, the dummies on the show they want to laugh at it, right? But they're all afraid to laugh because it's the great John Madden. And, and we've had John Madden on this show like a million Santa times. Claus. Have you met Madden? Have, no, you know, know how he like feels. Me. He doesn't like you doing it. He Ooh. basically said, you know, <laughs> guys, the, people think <laughs> that he is me, and he is not me. But people think, and he says the things that people think that I say and I don't say those things. And, 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 and that's why, that, you know, when you when you hear him say these things, but you think that it's me and, 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 and it is me. That is just, I gotta tell you, that is so intimidating Frank, for me. It really is. You are funny on so many levels with the impressions. Promise us. I mean, it's the first time we met you, but just promise us you're not going to be one of these guys. That the next thing, you know, you've signed a deal with someone and the show is called Frank and Friends for, for NBC, where you play a wacky guy who's got a guy next door to you and a neighbor. I mean, but I, I can make that promise, but how much money are we basing? <laughs> yeah, the other guy's not going to lie, because if he did lie, he'd never be a real boy, get swallowed by a whale, Geppetto would get mad, a cricket would start to sing. I mean, see, I got a couple observations for you. First of all, John Madden takes the beginning of the sentence, which is the same at the end of the sentence, and then the middle blows up on itself. But he saves it with these words, and the words are, and that's what that's all about, okay? <laughs> you think that great football is about great football, and you've got great football players playing great football. That's the best kind of football to play. But when you have regular players <laughs> playing great football, I mean, that's just regular great football. What you want is great football, and you don't even hit it. And, 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 and that's what that's all about. <laughs> It's like a band-aid. Amen. Oh, my Amen. God. You are it's great. You are great. You know, really, I think when you do what you do for a living, if you can get in a career, one guy like that. I mean, you look at a guy like David Fry who had Richard right. Nixon. I mean, and, and there are a lot of guys that, that do a million of them. And I think in their entire careers, I mean, I'll use big names. I get, You know, they always talk about Rich Little with Johnny Carson. But even with that, he did so many. But to get one guy and to nail it, I mean, that's just fantastic. Have you, guys, have you guys heard the Bush yet? The President Bush is no. my newest big thing. All right. Okay. Yeah, roll, roll. Right. Let's hear it. I love President Bush because I think it's great we have a president who seems like he's looking directly into the sun, first of all. <laughs> he's always got that look. It's like, could somebody do me a favor? Hand me a pair of sunglasses, because I can't see crap right now. Remember that thing you got wrong? As if there was one like that. Here's a guy who's underestimating. Uh, that, uh, <laughs> that's what that's about. There's an old saying in Texas. Fool me once. Shame on you. Shame me, uh... uh, uh, uh once, twice, three times a lady. And the other one that's gotten really huge, and this is only for certain people, but the Jim Rome impression. Okay, guys, all right. Well, I've never heard that. Let me hear it. What a great idea. 
<laughs> Me on your show. <laughs> this is phenomenal. <laughs> Don and Mike in... <laughs> and I am in the jungle, but I'm on the Don and Mike show. How does that happen? Let me tell you. Uh, right now, first, I'm going to pause for no reason. <laughs> I swear to God. This is a, you got to have a 10-second pause. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Clones. <laughs> Clones. I am talking to you right now. If you do not hear me, you're probably dumb. <laughs> that is terrible. <laughs> Get the gear. So what we did on Fox, that was the first one that got Bradshaw and those guys going, <laughs> is I did Jim Rome. And believe it or not, as chubby as I am compared to him, I looked almost exactly like him. And we, we had a guy playing Al <laughs> Davis. See. Okay. The guy was playing Al Davis, okay? And he was a 103-year-old man, <laughs> owner of the Oakland Raiders. By the way, the Raiders hated me. Okay. <laughs> but a uh, 103-year-old guy. And he falls asleep during, during one of Jim Rome's pauses. So at, this, at that point, I go, now I'm going to pause for no reason. <laughs> Wait, pause. <laughs> oh, that is a great you don't, you don't, you don't, uh, God damn that. We've got a call from George in D.C. George, go ahead. Yeah, Jim. Thanks for the van. Uh, <laughs> got a take, and it's not going to suck. We have found the weapons of mass destruction, <laughs> but they're all invisible. <laughs> Great call. Whack them. The president of the free world calling the jungle, letting us know that these weapons are out there, but you can't find them. Oh, hilarious. <laughs> That's good. That, that oh is my so God. freaking right on. <laughs> and the one thing that get, the, the thing that changes things or that, <laughs> that gets people about me is because once I set them up in the act, right. I just start going from person to person. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So it's just like I, I, I'll, I've got bits, you know, and then when I start going, it's just like going from Jim Rum to, a, you know, a John Madden with Mr. Robert Williams. Who knew? <laughs> it's Chino time. It's a little Adam Sandler coming for you. Listen, <laughs> President Bush is here, and here's Bill Clinton. I didn't think you'd call me, but that is right. Thank you. <laughs> I can't believe it does a Chris. Now, when you're at the, uh, here's your plug, at the Improv, God, you are a whore. Listen to this. <laughs> Tuesday through Thursday night shows, Friday nights, uh, Saturday night, two shows, Sunday shows. How many shows? Wait, you're doing a Tuesday, Tuesday through Friday? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I, I'm Thursday, uh, Friday, Saturday at the DC Improv. Oh, it says Tuesday, Tuesday so you're not well, there. I'm, I'm, I'm going to probably pop in there tonight, but I, you know. Just to work on some stuff? No, just to whore it out. Just to whore it out. <laughs> Here's the guy who goes to the DC Improv every chance he can and try and sell as many tickets as he can, and then they sell out, and then people can't get in, and then he gets more money next time. And that's what that's all about. Dude is calling himself out on his promotional tools, and that is terrible. When you come on the Dawn and Mike show, you don't have to work the DC Improv into every sentence you say. Right you just did phenomenal. That's great. Now, I have on the on the website, uh, uh, there's downloads, and there's free downloads. There's CDs you can buy and stuff like that. Okay. We made these downloads free for Sprint phones. I get nothing from Sprint yet, but I'm working on it. <laughs> you trust the guy who really doesn't want yeah. it. Oh, what tangled webs are woven. First we practice deception, and Wilbur lives, but Charlotte dies. <laughs> Man, that Charlotte was one sexy spotter. She was. You know, you, if this is the only guy I've ever heard work a new board, very award winner. And uh, Don and Mike. I think that is great. Not funny, Frank. Still not funny. Personally, I didn't think it was that bad. <laughs> but you can download Al Pacino to your cell phone, which nothing beats having your cell phone go off in the middle of a crowd going, You got a phone call. <laughs> you got a phone call. Answer it. <laughs> or, hey, folks, John Mad here, and I'm on your cell phone. And I'm probably going to annoy people more than ever. And it, 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 there you go. Let me tell you this. i got to tell you this before I forget, because he, he can turn anything into a Brett Favre reference. <laughs> he can be talking about the grass and the field. Like, half of that grass is real, and half of that is fake. But Brett Favre is all real. I mean, you could, you could talk about both Brett Favre's arms and both his legs. He would still be the best torso in football. That's just, Brett Favre, I mean, he can throw a football 200 yards underwater. I can't even throw a football one yard underwater. But, I mean, that's, that's 199 more yards right there. And, I mean, and then you, he, can, and he can hit any target. Brett Favre has such a great arm. He can hit any target. That's why you put Brett Favre in Afghanistan. Boom, he hit Osama Bin Laden. Yeah. Like a 
Packers don't want to get rid of him. They need Brett Favre <laughs> because Brett Favre is the Brett Favre uh, of the Packers. And without Brett Favre, they would be the Packers without Brett Favre. And, and, that, and, that, and that's what that's all about. <laughs> Yes, I oh, cannot man. believe Madden gets mad at that. I really, I mean, I just can't believe he gets, he, he doesn't dig it that much because you I are mean, too, you oh, are too great, fantastic. You are, you are too funny. You are too great. We are uh, huge fans. Oh, thank you so huge much. Huge fans of yours. Uh, thank you for coming by. I mean, uh, I know you got all these other DJ things to do, and and thanks for coming by our thank show. Thanks for having me. We're, we're big big fans. What's your website again? Uh, MadTVGuy.com, MaddenGuy.com, MaddenGuy.com. You got that yet, Buzz? Mad TV. Yeah, I've got it. And what is uh, Mad TV? TV? Real player. When does uh, Matt TV uh, start its new season? Uh, not till September. When the so. when the NFL starts up again, too. And I, I can I throw this in here too? Yeah. Sure can. There's a guy not even going to plug something. He's just going to tell you about a bit he does. Okay, throw it in, dude. That is ridiculous. Get to the bit and stop stalling. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Neither do I. <laughs> I wish you had some jokes for these voices. Well, it's Robin Williams time. It's switching voices without having jokes. Here we go. And we're dancing. We're dancing. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the bit that got like Rudy Marsky from USA Today going and stuff like that. Was hey, Rudy, Rudy, right? When I did, uh, I did the Rush Limbaugh bit, right? right? Which was I came on and the guys working with me, Scott Long, this week uh, wrote this joke that we put in there. It was uh, he was call, he was uh, doing his show from the Trent Lott Rehab Center. <laughs> oh, I saw it with all, thousands of pills, all the pills around me, and I was like, uh, and I was in a hospital room, like greetings, my friends. When I say my friends, I mean you guys. My oxycontin pills. <laughs> And I shoveled a bunch of pills. Now, when Rush came back, he's like, I've seen the bits. I know what's going on out there. Um, Mr. Snurdly, what's the Fox guy's name, the little guy? Um, well, whatever. I saw that one. That was funny. So he liked it. Yeah, oh, he good. All right. Okay. Dude so you... got the bit. <laughs> Great. Not doing the Madden thing and pretending like it never happened. <laughs> Hold on. I, gotta... I have never heard your Jim Rome before. i do this for you. Hold on. We just got a huge fax. <laughs> Uh, Rustling the facts so you know that it's here. <laughs> you are great. Dear Jim, wait a second, there is nothing on the facts. Being told the facts is on the other side. <laughs> there it is. Dear Jim, this is the greatest show you've ever done. You topped yesterday's show, which to that point was the greatest show you'd ever done. <laughs> Signed, Jim Rome. <laughs> Backs myself. Close. <laughs> Hysterical close. Oh, fantastic. That is. That is. That, I never knew no, you did it, Jim Rome. People, people think he's Rome calling, Rome's calling in drunk. Like, dude, Rome was drunk. That no, is, he wasn't. It was Caliendo doing it. Goddamn, that's Fake poor stuff at the DC Improv. <laughs> Frank, that is Caliendo great. plugging himself again. That's awesome. Go ahead and plug at the Improv this weekend. Uh, hold on, I got a uh, D DCimprov.com. Go there uh, to get your tickets. Uh, See you there Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night? Thursday, uh, 8.30, Friday, 8 and 10.30, Saturday, 8 and 10.30, and Sunday at 8 o'clock. Go out and see Frank Caliendo. He's the absolute best in the business. Well, we have three more shows to do this week. If you wouldn't mind calling in or coming by I'll every day. I'll be here every day. I'll be every day. I'll be phenomenal. I'll be every day. Seriously, you are, you are fantastic. Uh, thank you guys very much. Oh, stop. It's great to be. <laughs> Dude, uh, no, now, good. Now I'm going to go take a cold shower. I'm doing President this. Bush doing Jim Rome. <laughs> okay, do it. Phenomenal. It's a great call. Uh, let's go. Uh, Jay Moore will be on the program in a, hour number two. Shaq Clank Fu calling in. The Crooked Eye will be. Uh, we, uh, listen, I don't have a problem uh, with gay marriages. I don't know where you heard that. Uh, uh, any, uh, as long as it's a gay man marrying a gay woman. Back to Jim Rowe. Gay woman. Great. Now I'm being banged like the monkey. He's calling out names, but I'm getting more airtime, so I'm sitting in. I don't care. I will bang that monkey just like the monkey bangs itself at the Spencer Gibbs and Mall. Back to Madden. Yeah, you know, and that's what you got to do. If you call it out, I'm going to do it. I mean, there, there are times, and if you keep going, I'll keep going because I have no problem. Al Pacino, what the hell is going on? Here? He starts to zig, and just when he thinks he's going to zag, wow, he zigs again. I can't believe it. Wow. This one's going to keep on going unless you stop. <laughs> wow, oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow. That's fun. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Oh, thank you for the show. Yeah, thank incredible. You for having me. Dude, so what's, uh, did you have a girlfriend? Are you? I just got married. You just got married? I think I just bought myself some extra time on the show. Yeah, we, now because we, we've been overwhelmed by this. <laughs> you know, we actually didn't. You're just, you're a newlywed? 
Uh, yeah, my my wife, I, I she's having a baby in July. Late July. You ever do voices while you were getting intimate with your wife? No, because look at the voices I'm doing. You know, it goes in, it goes out, boom, I'm done. <laughs> I mean, it's over. I mean, I mean, I mean, that was phenomenal. <laughs> Grab a cigarette. <laughs> Racker. Rack. 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 <laughs> Buzz, you got it on the web. Turn it around. Okay, back to Frank. Okay, turn it around. I want to take a look. I got take a look at Frank this. Frank is more handsome than he is funny. Now, that this is this is Frank funny being all four guys. He is handsome. There he is, is Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy. You just raised your hand twice. I'm the coach. I can do whatever I want. If he gets to, I want to. You don't have anything you can say about it. And I'm going to keep doing it. And I get way because Well, this will never sort itself out. So I'm going to throw it back to, well, I guess me. JB. <laughs> you know, it would have it really would have been something if it imitated me, right? And then their reaction. It was too great. I, I mean, I watch that show all the time anyway. Yeah, they're, they're great. If you can see them off the screen, uh, you know, off TV when they're just going at each other, they're the funniest. They're great on TV. I they really have a good time. And it's I I still say that it's I think that I have probably that gig following having to follow Kimmel. And then having to uh, go with Terry Bradshaw, who's going to pretend to be Simon Powell every week. <laughs> it, you know, it's, it's that's just it's, it's. I don't think there's a tougher gig sure. in comedy, and I don't think I did. I don't believe me. I don't think I hit a home run every week. There were about four or five home runs nah, this year. No, no, no. Listen, you, you you get solid triples and home runs. I'm telling you, that's a that's a tough friggin' spot because you have guys not like me who appreciate it. You have guys that are like, <laughs> you know, what I mean, guys that are like football is, the, is everything, and they like Julian Barber because they like. Like a nice girl with big oh, yeah. boobs. Well, also, yeah, when you do, and when you dive in and you do the impressions of all of them, that's when uh, you know you take that chance and it went over. Yeah, and then we, I think we, you, we, you cemented yourself. I in went there. in. I went in the studio as Robin Williams with those guys one mm -hmm. time, and I'm like, Howie Long, come on, this is a guy who speaks for Radio Shack. Let me ask you this: Did they hire you or build you? Come on, <laughs> the hope is green. What's going on here, Bradshaw? Here's a guy who supports supercuts. Come on, would they go crazy? Come on, Let's talk about steroids. Here we go, and we're damned. You know, so, <laughs> they didn't think we could top that one, and then we went in. Because every time we did one that was better, they're like they didn't think we could top it. And then right. when we did all four guys, we really couldn't top it yeah. because it, it was just so. Because those guys really want to hear about who does your makeup on the. Is the it same one Matt person? TV people. Oh really? Yeah, they, the Matt they, TV they, folks they, that do that. Uh, Jennifer Aspinall, who who used to years ago do Saturday Night Live uh, right. with Dana Carvey mm -hmm. and Phil Hartman, mm -hmm. she does the makeup at Mad TV and the head of makeup and, and helped me out at, at at that. And it's just you know it's amazing because a lot of things we were doing from scraps, like we didn't have. The real parts because right. we weren't the, the budget wasn't like that. But sure, that makeup, you know, it's Rick Baker kind of stuff. You're talking right. tens of thousands of dollars. Well, that is an ad. That is such a great spot on that show, and it's such a. It's come along, you know. It's one of those things if you're watching with a group of people, mm -hmm. you can e easily identify who. Get, first off, you all like football, but then that comes on, and then there are people. I've been in a room with people, but like your Madden comes on, and I'm falling on mm -hmm. the floor, <laughs> and like there's three or four guys that are laughing, and then there's you got to know it. You got to know. You got to be a fan first of and all. Madden to, and, to, and, to get into it. And that. then there's one guy sitting there who says, what's funny about this? Right. <laughs> but because because he's John Madden. Right. Come on, everything's funny about this. <laughs> Look at this. He's got like 8,000 barbecue chicken wings. And because I'm such a fan of Mad TV, you're happy there, you're going to be there for, yeah, for the foreseeable three, future? Yeah, they just uh, they just upped the, the show for three more years, and I'll be on it for... For two more. For two more. Yeah. And then, you always have to check with Fox. You always have to make, <laughs> right. have yeah, to yeah, make sure with yeah. the Fox they, Network they because they lose a lot of good people. They really do. Oh, well, Frank, thank you for coming in here. Well, thank and, you guys uh, for having me. You're fantastic. We're, you're, you know so, what? You're right. I, uh, you are what? fantastic. No. <laughs> you, are, you are. I really appreciate it, and I thank you guys for having me in. Thank you for riffing. You're great. You're funny. Uh, please get out of here. Not Frank funny. Caliendo, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah. You're great. All right. Good I just clap for myself. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. We, we clap for ourselves all the time. Oh, man. And I will still continue to study you when I'm working on other. So, so I had a guy that showed up, and I know you're trying to get rid of me, but I, I had a no, guy. No, we're not. We had a guy, commercials. A guy showed up in Orlando that looked exactly like President Bush, <laughs> and he's like, uh, I just want you to know I'll be borrowing your President Bush impression. Yeah, there you go. Not so the material, be... but I'm like, well, <laughs> well, then I want a percentage. There you go. <laughs> hey, Mike, Here's, we well, haven't I'll, given I'll you some check. <laughs> why don't you do? Why don't you do Bush on Bush? Uh, no, not going to do it. Not come, on, come on, no, come I, on. No, come on. Fred Travelina, yes, time. not Frank Elliott. Just do one time here for 30 seconds. When Fred Travelina is in here. I'll try to do that, but that's it's very good. difficult to do with Frank Caliendo. And that's You're great. It was uh, very impressive. Thank you. It's time. We have, to, we have to fight, get together. We have to put ourselves together and read Charlotte's Web like he was mentioning earlier. Penny saved is a... That's one cent. <laughs> Spanish centavo that you put in your pocket to the end. That's one small step for man. And uh, I'll walk around somewhere else.
<laughs> yeah, it's a, a, a couple of steps petering out. Ask not what you can do for your country, but how you could help the guy next door. <laughs> yes, uh, and hopefully that guy next door is your neighbor. And <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Oh. That's a draw. Life is beautiful. That's a draw, Mike. Oh, thank you. You've done you. good. Thank yes. you. Don't ask the... I won't do you the Madden. Do, you, I, will not, like, I told him I won't do the you're Madden. You're like Apollo Creed against Rocky. I, stu I studied him you know, to do that Madden when I was doing it, and mm -hmm. I still don't have it, and I won't do that. I'll embarrass myself, so that's it. Okay. You are the best, really. Right. You are You oh, are the best. Just I didn't say that I didn't say that when Fred Travelina was yeah. in here. Well, yeah, hey, thanks. <laughs> thanks a lot for not saying that when Fred Travelina was in here. Remember those days? Ooh, that was tough. That was. Now, Frank, now you got to get out because we talk about you when you leave. Phenomenal. <laughs> rack me. Great job I did. No, you are going to so rack much. you. I really pre appreciate it. Thank you. Go see Frank at the improv. It's a great meeting. He's going to be, be there in wow. D.C. this weekend. Don't be a stranger. And I am out. He's out. Hit. Hilarious. Thank you, Frank. Oh, is he great? great. Is he, Unbelievable. he really is great. The Jim Rome was completely out of left field. <laughs> I had no idea. Unbelievable. I really busted, uh, busted one. Because we had not yeah. heard the Jim Rome ever. And we've done, you know, how many of those broadcasts when we've been in one of those DJ rooms oh, with Jim Rome across the way? Crack him! Crack yeah. him! <laughs> well, he's good. He's yeah, good. No mm -hmm. kidding. Boy, oh boy, Mike, is he good. Yeah, I know he is. Yeah. Boy, is he good. I'm feeling inadequate right now. <laughs> See, but you, you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Bush thing with him. Yeah, well, the Bush. You know, that's one thing. But Madden, you you know. Bye, uh, bye, bye, Frank. You know what? If I'd done the Madden with him, I would have cried. Because you know, well, I his Madden is the best Madden well, that's ever. That's With no offense. Yeah, I know. So, yeah. His Madden is the best Madden was, ever. You know, a couple of times there, I was getting ready to stand up and leave. <laughs> I really oh, no, was. No, no, no. But you know what? Really, I think I deserve credit for sitting here and not crying. Really? Why would you cry? Well, it's like, because you, you know, you sit there, you do with that, and then you see another guy that does the same thing, and he does it so well. It's great, you know? <laughs> yeah, to be quite honest with you, I wish I was on TV sometimes. <laughs> you, know? you don't think Frank Kelly Andrews walking out of here, we're going, hey, I wish I was Mike O'Mara being able to sit there every day and do that great show <laughs> with all those great guys? He looked jealous to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he really did. He sure did. Um, we have just enough time for a, a teeny phone scan. I mean, like, it's like if you're having sex with me. Not that much time. Absolutely. Well, let's chat. 877-365-3636. Hello. It's from America, Canada, 800-636-1067. Your call's on the phone scale, and we got to really... Hello. we got to fly. Call now. This is the Don and Mike Show. This is the Don and Mike Show. I think socks had something to do with that decision. It's not funny. I beg your pardon? What word do you have trouble with? You understand not? That's comfortable for you? Yeah. And funny, you've heard of that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This doesn't work. You see, I think socks had something to do with that decision. See, now I'm laughing. Well, uh, laugh loud so you can cover for the rest of us. Hey, hey, you like your job? No. Well, watch it. Let me go. Oh, may I? Thank you. Come on, sis. Watch it, asshole. The Don and Mike Show. Smoother than Bacardi Limon, Don and Mike. Hey! Bacardi Limon. It's smoother than that. <laughs> uh, phone scan, and we really got to fly because we're into buzz news time now. Hey, hey. Just too much show today. Dennis Murphy uh, from Los Angeles. Wow. Great show. Uh, Joe at NASCAR. Frank Caliendo. Uh, Pinocchio, I guess this is what, what it might be like to have a real radio show. <laughs> you know, it sure feels like it today, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, well, don't worry. Tomorrow we'll be back to the same joke. <laughs> same mediocrity. I see we had to we had to bump a guy today. We had to bump the Broadway show tune guy today. Oh, well. Yeah. The guy, He's furious. <laughs> the guy's really worried, but we're going to bring him back. The guy who says the best way to get over 9-11 is by singing show tunes. Hello, Dolly. I asked him if he had any availability the rest of the week. He said, yeah, name it. Shocker. Yeah. <laughs> he was waiting in the green room. Here we go, 877-365-3636. A phone scan. Hello, these are un... Scripted calls on screen calls. Hello. Donnie G, I have a feeling something good is about to happen to you. Okay, Rick, what is it? Ooh, if I could be your daddy and you could give me a Cadillac. <laughs> okay, well, that's the same guy. I think we got a regular caller. Yeah. Two days in a row now to your dad. <laughs> daddy for the caddy. And he's disguising his voice every time. <laughs> and what if Rick Dees was my father? Wouldn't know, well, you, know, you know what would happen to you? You'd be up on the roof. Hello, Don and Mike. That means I would be a stepbrother to Johnny D. You'd be up there doing your cicada impression. Hello, Don and Mike. Yeah, I was wondering if you guys heard about uh, Shannon Sharp on uh, CBS NFL today. Yeah, you know, we, we didn't have time to get to a lot of the stuff that uh, that I wanted to, to discuss. Mm -hmm. uh, 
they have replaced Deion Sanders on the uh, CBS show with, with uh, retiring Shannon Sharp. With, with Shannon Sharp. Mm -hmm. Hi, friends. Jim Nance. Oh, and <laughs> I told all you guys, I didn't tape it because I don't tape anything. I only watch stuff and tell other people to tape it. Right. Uh -huh. When I was watching the golf on Saturday, I only watch golf because it's in high definition. Right. Is Jim Nance giving another eulogy? Here's the thing. It's obvious that Nancy felt weird about reading the slug for Helter Skelter. <laughs> yeah, because it's oh, too violent. I'm sure. Uh, it'd be like this would be... Defense and sensibilities. Tiger Woods lining up at the 17. <laughs> Lenny, he's got his stroke back. This reminder, Sunday night, oh, uh, <laughs> there is uh, parental guidance advised, uh, graphic images, Helter Skelter, uh, Sunday night, here on uh, CBS. <laughs> America's most, most watched network. You know, in private, he's saying... I, I don't understand, guys, why they make uh, why they make entertainment out of that. Yeah. It's a vicious, vicious, savage murder that really shouldn't be glorified. Why and, should they glorify that when they could be making a movie that just shows class, like, like, like radio? radio. Like radio. Yeah. Why don't they uh, make a movie about Vinny, our guy on the tower that just went in for surgery? Oh, here's no, then, then I'm watching. Here is my here is my only thought: is Shannon Sharp will be great on on that show. Okay. However, will he be as good as Sterling? Here's what you need. Here's what you need to do. First, he has to have more buttons than Dion. You, yeah. First, you put him in a nine button suit. Yeah. Listen, Sterling and. Shannon Sharp, I don't think. I think really. And second, they can they can trump Dion on the look. No, you know, Sterling does it. If Sterling Sharp is the guy that, that played for the the Packers. Right. Shannon Sharp is the guy that played for the Broncos. If you remember when the Broncos, Shannon, right. If you remember when the Broncos won the Super Bowl, I think he's fantastic. Hello, <laughs> hello. Oh, no. You know we didn't get to this today. Now look what you've done. Hello, Mr. Drosdale. <laughs> yes, now it's time time to have some prepared bitman comedy. <laughs> Sammy Sosa, hello. Sammy Sosa took himself out of the lineup the other night. Why's that, Mr. Shannon? He threw his back out when he went into a sneezing frenzy. Apparently, he's allergic to cork. Oh, cork's cork. back, Joe. Mm -hmm. um, God. Cork! <laughs> what was I saying? You're talking about Sterling Sharp? Sharp. Oh, thank you. Shannon when, Sharp replacing Deion Sanders. When the Broncos won the Super Bowl, they he wore a hat, a horse hat, in the, in the, in the locker room. Now... What it was is it's the thing that the dumb fans wear. It's a hat, you know, on the Broncos helmet that yeah, like right. that's a horse a horse's face. Well, it's this hat that was like Smarty Jones's face, right? White plastic and goes all the way down over his forehead, down towards the bridge of his nose, mm -hmm. and where the horse's mane would be. I mean, or the, the hair coming out of his head was like a giant Broncos pom pom, right? And after the Super Bowl, everybody's crying for John Elway and saying how great this is. And Shannon Sharp came in. I still remember wearing wearing the horse hat. Lenny uh, put on that spectacular horse hat. Pure class. <laughs> <laughs> My recommendation is that Deion Sanders wear the Denver Broncos horse hat. Shannon Sharp. And Shannon Sharp every week that he's on TV. Will Dion resurface on another network? Dion wants too much money to have. Ah, okay. And Dion, Dion wants a bling bling. He's also got outside interests. I believe this year he's hosting the Dove Awards. Ah, wonderful. Do, do you know, uh, thank you for the call. Do you know what Dion Sanders did last year to, to augment his income? Did you know that he was the host, I'm, I'm not kidding, host of the American Sportsman? Was he really? On wow. ESPN? Really? <laughs> he wow. was. Wow. Good Hello there. Yeah. I think he's a hunter. I seen him fishing. <laughs> okay. I seen him out there. <laughs> really? It was like Deion Sanders? Yeah, you know, God. whatever to make a buck, you know. Oh. It's, it's name recognition. Right. Right. And he was making a million. He wanted two million. CBS told him to get bent. Bring in Shannon. Bring in Shannon Sharp. And don't forget the horse hat. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. Hello, sugar bear. Oh, hi. It's my wife, Frida. Oh, Frida's on the line. Frida, my wife. I've missed you, darling, but where's Bart? He's working, honey. You know that. I was just wondering. Yeah. I got hiccups. Yes, I was wondering whether Barty would be coming home late tonight. <laughs> that's, a, that's like a it's like Jonathan Winters calling in. You're trying. <laughs> you, you know, were you just trying to work all of my wife's catchphrases in here? It's like all Marty Frickett well, calling in. I really wanted to say that, Mikey, you're still the best. Oh, we God bless you. you, Mikey. Thank, thank you. Unlike you, freaking thank loser. You, you. Sound oh. like a Harden and Weaver, like when Harden and Weaver used to do that. <laughs> What's the weather, Marty? <laughs> Frickin'. Hello, Donna Mike Show. Hello, dear. Oh, my God. Hello. No, 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 too much. Frank brought out all the impressions. Not two days in a row. Hi, Donna Mike Show. Hello. Hello, you're on the air. Hey, I just wanted to tell Mike that um, he's a very good impersonationist. 
And uh, what do you okay, make? Let's, let's stop it there. Yeah. A very you're, good impersonation. You're a good impersonation. That might be the first time I've ever heard that one. Yeah. A good impersonation. Hello, Don and Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Don and Mike. Yes, we are. Hi there. Yes, I love your voices, Mike. Mo Mike's a good impersonationist. What? Mike's a very good impersonationist. Is this a, is, is a, is this a man or a woman? Yes. This is scary. See, you know yeah. what? You know the thing that now all of the now part, the Frank Caliendo. All of, all mm -hmm. of the part timers are calling. Yeah, it. yeah. I mean, they're like they're auditioning for Mad TV. <laughs> you know, I didn't do it. I don't think anybody else. Should. No, it's shameful, really. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Are you guess yeah? Are you like going through a processor or something? What? Are you going through a machine, a computer, or a voice processor? Nope. I'm not going through any machine. I'm just uh, talking. That they're all out. Uh, yeah. did, wow. did Caliendo bring these people I to it? Yeah, I don't know. Yes, he did. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for clearing that up. Oh, Hello, Tom and Mike show. <laughs> Hello, guys. What's going on? Well, Frank Caliendo may have brought them in, but Mike, you're taking them all home because <laughs> <laughs> you are a good in, 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 impersonation. Impersonation. <laughs> I want to be called that for the rest of the my life. Impersonation. A pers impersonation. You like that better than mimic? I do. Oh, mimic. No, of course, uh, that's always my, my thing with Gordon. Mike O'Mara, talented mimic. Mike O'Mara is a good mimic. The he good... does me better than I do me. Where's my bowl? <laughs> the last one, oh, the yellow bowl? Yeah. The last one is when someone called you a voice imitator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hello, Don and Mike. Impersonationist. <laughs> Hello. Hey, guys. What's hey. going on? Hey, you're on the air. Hi there. All right. Hey, um, I wanted to share with you an interesting and scary fact that I recently learned. All right, go. That the KGB, the letters, you know, the Russian KGB? Sure. Originally stand for, you know, in Russian translated, the Homeland Security Department. <laughs> interesting. Wow. <laughs> that is a nice okay. little incident. Coincidence? That gets you a chime, my friend. Okay. Hello, Don okay. Mario. Hello. Hey. Radio Gods, can you guys send Dennis Murphy this year to uh, Burning Man in Reno, Nevada? What is Burning Man? Uh, it's the largest uh, party in the world. It, uh, it's over Labor Day or Memorial, whatever, the end of the summer. And they have over 25,000 people come to the Red Rock Desert. Would someone set Dennis on fire? N no. Why do no? they call it Burning Man? Uh, I guess the, well, the story was, was a guy who used to get beat up in San Francisco by his dad, so he had a, a man on the beach, and every year they would set it on fire in protest of his, his father. So I got so crazy. No, I'm sorry. Sounds like, sounds like a really great party. A good sounds story. like maybe you paid a little bit too much to the party, not exactly the theme of the party. So the, they, they have a party every year in Reno called Burning Man because a guy beat up his kid? Well, so the kid protested, and, and... What, did he burn somebody in effigy, or what, burn a dummy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I, I've, I've never been there, and I've always wanted to hear it on, on national radio. And, uh, you, you want to hear what, the Burning Man party? Yeah, Dennis Murphy, to Burning Man. You know, we got an idea guy here. Uh -huh. And it's really in a roundabout way. I mean, so difficult explaining himself, but I mean, yeah, that's what it is. We've hired a producer. We've hired a producer. She starts in a couple of weeks. Thank you, though. Good day, guys. Remember, you're a listener, not a caller, and you just should feel lucky you're not going in the book today. Amen. Hello, Donna Mike Show. Radio God. That guy was book worthy. Yeah. He was. Hello. Radio God. Yeah, you're on the air. Howdy. I don't want to steal any of Buzz's thunder or anything. Of course not. Did you not. guys hear that? Buzz, I love you. Uh huh. Did you all hear that? Seacrest is out for good. They're canceling his oh, show. Oh my God! We have to do it. Oh, yeah. We have to do it. No choice I'm here. I'm sorry. What's your name, sir? What's my name? Uh -huh. Yes, Justin. Justin, last initial, please. Justin N. Justin N. Justin N. N. Justin Seacrest out. Seacrest out. Let's see what uh, out. you're calling. Seacrest. Out. Calling from area code 302. Uh, Newark, Delaware, friends. Delaware. Delaware. Okay. Seacrest out. Seacrest out. Seacrest yeah, out. Listen. Out. Don't hang up. Here's the. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter. We got his phone number. All here's right. here's the deal. I'll, I'll, I'll take one for the team. I'll, no, you're not no, taking one for the team. You're taking this for you. You're taking it because you deserve it. Yeah, you deserve right. it. We had this several times during the broadcast today. It was our open. Our opening was a uh, Leonard Goldman. Mm -hmm. Yes, who was Tony uh, Randall. We Tony Randall him. is right. dead. Had and that earlier. Ryan Seacrest show is canceled. And we even talked to the girl that won the chance to be on the show, and she's still going out there to say on TV that Gay Don and Mike love Ryan Seacrest. See, I was in class all day. You look at all the Don and Mike fun that I missed. My friend, listen oh. to this. Listen to what you made us do. Okay. Congratulations. 
you belong as a charter member in the Don and Mike Exclusive Listeners Club. Congratulations. You are now a registered Don and Mike caller and are entitled to all the privileges that come with said title. Get a sign. Be sure to watch your mailbox for your registered Don and Mike caller sign. Right. Which is to be placed prominently in your front yard. You have been profiled, tagged, and you are now in the book. Yes, good day. Good day. Oh. I said good day, sir. Good day, sir. Good day. That's Thanks, it. guys. All right, see you never. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, it's a tough day when we had to put two people in the book. That's uh, mm-hmm. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 9 and 10? No, no. It's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Let's just skip all the zeros. What, what's his number? Oh. 10. 10. 10. So you're both guilty of the zero thing. You can get zero us to death oh. here. All right, that's what I'm saying. I, I'm I think we just go to 10. Yeah, I'm advocating we drop the zero. Fantastic. Because oh. eventually it will get to seven, eight, nine digits. True. Oh, absolutely. You know, long before thousands. Our, long before our contract we'll is over. We have to restructure the computer program. We have to leave the zero. <laughs> right now, he's number 10. Number 10. Zero, 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 zero,
Private England says she and others only abused prisoners because they were ordered to do so. I bet Rumsfeld thought of that one. <laughs> Rummy. She says she and baby's daddy, Corporal Charles Grainer, used needles and thread to sew up the wounds they had inflicted on those orders. Needles and thread. Regular I've... needles and thread to sew up the wounds they created that they said that they only created because they were told to I've do seen so. her, and I've heard people mm -hmm. say she's butch, mm -hmm. that, you know, she's dykey, yeah. that she's masculine. I want to say this. Caddy. What's her name, Buzz? Uh, Lindy. Lindy England. And I'm not leading into the VD thing. I Each want to... time I see a little girl... Yes, Ed? Of five or six or seven... Or 20 over in Iraq. I can't resist a joyous urge to smile and say... Hello! Thank heaven... Yeah, Lindy. Yeah. For little girl... Let me just say... What a sweetheart. You can't petite. spell G-I... Or you spe can't spell girl <laughs> without uh, G-I. Yeah, there you go. Right. I like that. Yeah, she's all woman. Is her name Lindy English? Yeah, it is. England. England. Lindy, Lindy England. England. Doesn't that sound like she'd be a porn star? Yeah, Lindy England. And maybe Lindy. Luck, lucky Lindy, as I like to call her. Isn't it like L I N D E E or L Y N D D I E? Yeah, Lindy England. Redneck white trash spelling. There you go. One day we'll Come on. Make it crawl through glass. I'm a pretty girl. Here's your maxi pad. I'm My sorry, you're bleeding, but I'll so it up for ye. Hello, Mr. Rumsfeld. This is Lindy. <laughs> I'm doing your work with maxi pads. Yes, sir. And then we, when they get cut up, we've done closed the womb with sewing thread. <laughs> this is the war I like so bad. <laughs> Thank heaven. I'm all girl. Yeah. Thank heaven. I, I cut my hair real short, though. Thank you, Edward, man. Heaven for little girl. Hello. And from our Homeland Insecurity Department, a story from Denver. The principal of an elementary school burst into a first grade class and approached each student saying, Bam, 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 you're dead. He did it to illustrate the importance of the school rule about locking the classroom doors. This was one room he'd found unlocked. No, he's not retarded. One mother says her boy still hasn't gotten out of bed since the incident. I want to thank a uh, famous uh, comedian and impressionist uh, Frank Kajagugu for coming in earlier today. <laughs> he wasn't too shy. Other parents say their kids hey, were... Hey, Buzz. <laughs> Other parents say their... Name it and claim it. Their kids were traumatized as well by the principal. No comment yet from school officials. And by the way, in England yesterday, a man was sentenced to three months in jail after he challenged a fair fellow airline passenger to step outside and fight <laughs> during a flight. The 30-year-old says he just finished a bottle of vodka. Oh, my oh God. My step outside. Oh, so, my oh, man, that, I haven't laughed that much since uh, Frank Chipotle was here. <laughs> now, pay attention, Rob, because this is how it begins. Okay. The Canadian War against the United States. It begins, apparently, with pizza. The yeah. U.S. has struggled with its brother to the north for years over import-export items like wheat, lumber, and livestock. Now the commodity controversy is over frozen, self-rising pizzas. Incredible! <laughs> Ottawa says it'll slap a 39% tax on said pizzas when they're made in the United States. But they say the U.S., specifically the people at Kraft Foods, fired the first volley by dumping ridiculously underpriced pizzas on the Canadian market, Take. hurting the sale of Canadian pizzas. Take Kraft baby marshmallows, <laughs> cover with feta cheese, serve it all with pickles and just a little brie, <laughs> and then cover it with eyelashes, another <laughs> delicious taste treat from Kraft. Write your congressman and remember you can't... Daddy, 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 where's the toenails? <laughs> ah, yes, toenails for flavor and... And texture. This pepperoni tastes like an invasion. Another <laughs> pleasant invasion from Kraft. <laughs> Rack him. Maybe you've gotten the uh, email announcing a nationwide gasoline boycott on Got for it. tomorrow. It says we can really show the oil yeah. companies were fed up with skyrocketing prices. Mm -hmm. The email says the industry would choke on its own supplies, even with just a one-day boycott. I'm in. Provided everyone in America I'm in. plays along. No problem at all. Can take care of it. I will be there tomorrow. Did you fill up today? America. I sure did. You filled up today. Of course <laughs> you did. Yes. A spokeswoman for the oil industry says that's not true. No choking. Quoting her, I don't know where they get that. Quoting an economics professor, it's hard to think of anything less effective than a one-day boycott. I'd hate to have to choke you out, Buzz. I is that what the kids say? Choke you out? Yeah, choke mm -hmm. you out. Right. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I think the industry is saying that, and I think that's just the reason people ought to do it. I got that email today from, it's been like a thousand people, and right. you can always tell it's valid when it says, 
This is not a joke. <laughs> yeah, that's how you know. You know what? And you said I filled up yesterday. I did fill up yesterday. I'm going to walk to work tomorrow. Good for you, Mike. I'm going to hoof it. Really? Started about 8 in the morning. <laughs> I'll be here. I'll look for you. I'll look for Scott Hey, you know, tomorrow I will have B.O. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like you didn't today. Hey! What's next? we got a break, Buzz. What's next? I'll tell you who isn't making money off the higher gas prices. Who isn't making money off the higher gas? Now, that's mm -hmm. impossible because everybody makes money off the no, higher gas No, not prices. everyone, Don. Uh, you're a tricky conjurer. <laughs> you are. You know no, I'm not I... making money. Mike's not making money. I don't know why you're saying I have B.O. Because there was a uh, prettier girl in here earlier, if you know what I mean, right? Frank Caballero. Like he didn't have B.O. too? <laughs> yeah, well, it was horrible. He had pet C. <laughs> C. <laughs> now I feel better. Uh -huh. We'll be right back. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. <laughs> This is the Don and Mike Show. Uh, gosh, I hate to interrupt. It's all been so incredibly fascinating and entertaining and instructive. Really, the time has just flown by. The Don and Mike Show. Stipulicious. The Don and Mike Show. Oh! She's on my nizzle. <laughs> and good tune time. Ten minutes until the hour. Buzz, what did you have on your forehead there? Number 56 to remind me when to stop tonight. There you got go. plenty of time. We're a little late tonight because of Frank Corncob, a very talented impersonationist who came by. <laughs> and I want to dedicate this to a very talented mimic who suffers from B.O., Mr. Michael Barrow. Thank you, Don. For you, Junior Walker, the outside. That's tight. Impressionationist, Don. Sweet, 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 Junior Walker. Hi, Buzz. Hi, Don and Mike. If someone named Apu is making money off the higher gas prices, he isn't the manager of the Quickie Mart. Gas prices are up by nearly 50 cents a gallon over last year to record high levels. The profit margin on gas at a convenience market has always been slim, and it's gotten even slimmer as prices go up. If you spend a dollar point zero eight eight for gas, the convenience store owner paid a dollar for it. He gets to keep the point zero eight eight cents. So there's not a big profit margin for him. Very, very small. Uh, the result is convenience store managers actually wait longer to raise their prices than the managers of just plain gas stations. And the more the customers spend on gas, the less they're spending on Slurpees. Don't you think that uh, this whole thing with gas prices, even though everybody agrees it's an outrage, mm -hmm. it's going to be one of those things, $2 a gallon is going to become... Norm, just like ten dollars for a movie ticket is norm now. Well, in Europe they've been paying fortune a fortune for gas for years. Right, five we pay, ten dollars. We a pay gallon. the cheapest gas prices in the world. And I've not noticed. And listen, I drive one myself. I've not noticed like like a less SUVs pulling in to fill up. No, I mean everybody's still doing it. I mean, but, and you know, it just, if it keeps going up, of course people will start complaining. There are more drive offs, and more gasoline thefts now because of the higher prices. They say. Oh, I've seen I've seen at the Exxon they got the thing that says uh, the picture that says you drive away you lose your license. What, Robbie? I was going to say as long as gas remains cheaper than Evian. Yes. Be okay. <laughs> yes. Amen. The nectar. Thank it's you, like Rob. Five dollars a gallon. It's delicious. And and it's eight? better than other waters. Water. In my humble opinion. <laughs> uh huh. Have you ever, uh, seen that, you. ever seen that Pat and Teller show called Bull S? No, I haven't. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Good gag. <laughs> just spit all your water out. I'm sorry. They did one one time. I, just, I haven't done that in a good long time. <laughs> Buzz hit me to the show. Yeah. And Bart and I were talking Back about it. Back on again with new See, I'm trying harder today because of Califano. Uh -huh. I know you are. I, that's great. Yeah, I know. It's, it's great. What, that I'm trying harder? Yeah. yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah, because I guess I phone it in every other day. No. Hey, that <laughs> oh, was, hold on. You right. can't have it both ways. You can't insult me anymore you, today. You said yeah, it. You go to your bag of tricks you and insult me anymore today. You start that with B.O. and it ends. Up. Yeah, that's great. I'm glad you're trying. You harder. said you said you're, you're doing a little more. Today. No, I'm not. I'm not. You know, I you, you, you can't wash my jock. There you go. <laughs> All right, I've said it. Frank Candy Apple. <laughs> Fast food restaurant. Thank you. Don't have bo. Thank you. Thank you, that's Don. True. You don't have bo. Oh, Stop. I do now. Stop spelling yourself. Oh God, well, do the I? The peer know. pressure after Frank oh, Christmas tree. Yeah. Well, it's just you know the. the pitch. After Frank who? Frank Christmas tree. Very good, yes. <laughs> fast food restaurants are starting to bogart the napkins. The heyday is over for fast food joints. And the heyday. Their, hey their profit margins are shrinking, so they're getting rid of the napkin dispensers and keeping the napkins behind the counter to be distributed to one paying customer at a time. Quoting the father of four, you should be able to grab as many as you want. He bought four ice cream cones and got two napkins. 
Georgia Pacific says its customers are cutting their orders for paper products by nearly a third. You know, I agree. That, that's one of your rights as a consumer. Yeah. When you go into McDonald's or Burger King... Oh, you're a restaurant owner. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Look around, cafe. You know, too bad. Hey, you know, you know what? You, you come in there, you, you order balance. wings. You order wings at my place, you get a stack. You that balance thing. it out today. Yeah. You want to say the bo stuff, and you want. You said the thing that you're pushing harder today than any. But who got how many plugs for your for your bar? Today? I did, and you know what? All the napkins you want. All right. I think you go into McDonald's, you get a hamburger. What the hell? Take every goddamn uh, uh, napkin they got out mm -hmm. of that thing. Just take it out. And take then, like, out. a month later, the next person that comes in has to pay more for his Big Mac. That's right. It's That's just how not it works. fair. You know, you're so jaded since you went to the other side, buddy. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> look around, cafe. Hey, you know what? Abundanza. Paper products, you go ahead. Knock yourself out. Really? Wow. Use a whole roll of toilet paper. <laughs> in there. Even on ladies' night on Wednesdays? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Look around, cafe. In sports, ESPN. When's B.O. night? B.O. night. Every night of the week. I was just going to like a little kid. Every night you're there. <laughs> ESPN. Is the, your brain's got this show on it. <laughs> now it's gotten ugly. Was that a walkie-talkie? <laughs> Over Roger. Oh, man. We're out of time. Finally, in Binghamton, New York, a recent Motel 6 guest is in trouble with the law. They left the light on for Roger Chamberlain last week, but when he checked out, the cleaning crew discovered that everything in his room, everything, including the mattress, the bedspread, the TV set, the chairs, the carpeting, and the towels, covered with a thick coat of Vaseline petroleum jelly. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. I thought you were going to say a thick coat of something else. E. Turns out Roger's from... It's a man-made product, what I was thinking of. <laughs> Roger's? Well, that might be there, too. Roger's from Virginia, which is where police caught up with him, but even that wasn't easy since Roger was also covered head to toe <laughs> with Vaseline. Uh, petroleum uh, jelly. <laughs> and he's from McLean, Virginia. I, uh -huh. So we should try to yeah. get him on the show, right? I'm sure he'd be very excited to Why, he made the national news. He's a hard oh. man to get a hold of. Yeah, I think you're going down a slippery slope there. Oh. Oh. I'm Buzz Burbank on the Don oh. Mike Show. Who was in today for you, Buzz? Uh, Would Dan Rather come by the show? You decided to pick your game up today? <laughs> Christ. I like it when I'm good and mediocre and everybody else is, too. <laughs> Trying to bring it down to my level tomorrow. We're tomorrow. having fun now. Uh, that's it. we got to go. We'll see you with a new episode tomorrow. Good day to you, good sir. Good day to you, sir. Good day to you, sir. Good day to you, sir. Don't have B.O. Thank you. Just a little bit. <laughs> getting on the show. Yeah, right. Mike, everybody has B.O. Yeah, in one way or another. B.O. is for everybody. Oh! <laughs> yeah, shake. Don't need to say that. Mm -hmm. See that. Uh, you. Hi, Dennis is Keith. <laughs> Watch behind your ears. Eat a lot. Till we meet again. Sammy Davis Jr. saying, uh, be kind, be nice, and I hope the next performer has the pleasure of having as nice an audience as you've been tonight. And let me leave you swinging. This is the Don and Mike Show.